Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a very unusual and new format. We've got a guest in the studio for the very I first time. I can't get time. used to that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, already, <laughs> I'm already sweating. Yeah, well, I, I, I set the thermostat to 72, so you better not. <laughs> right. But, uh, well, so welcome, everybody, to the show. This is going to be, uh, you know, we've got a lot to talk about. We've got some artwork for sale, uh, 20 different lots. But uh, we, this, again, this is just going to be a lot of fun because I've never had a guest in studio with me before. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what a mess it is. Oh, it, my God. This is exactly. Like people, <laughs> people can't see the uh, piles of clutter that really are around here. This is, this is a bit kidding. embarrassing. I'm kidding. <laughs> But uh, but no, so uh, you know I usually go over the format for the sale and everything. I know we've already got sixty five people watching the show live. Maybe, uh, but I think we'll wait until we get to the sale portion of the show. We were just talking. We're going to probably start that at about thirty minutes into the show because uh, there's a lot of things that we can talk about once we're looking at the art for sale. But uh, you know, I, Adam, here, here's a question number one. It's this is a real <laughs> simple one. Okay, I hope so. Is it <laughs> Kubert or Kubert? Kubert. Hubert, like, right. the, like the video game. Well, that's what I have yeah. always said. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, a lot of people say it in many different ways. Yeah. And I have, uh, yeah. I always try to correct them. And I think maybe, yeah. I, maybe I should ask yeah. you to be sure. Um, it, it, Kubert, you know, it, it's not Kubert. That, that's for sure. Right. <laughs> Hubert. All right, everybody. Yeah. Now you know. If you say Kubert anymore, it's wrong. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, Adam, you know, the thing is, after we had to get together here in February, uh, it was so much fun. I mean, I could tell, you know, so everybody was enthralled with looking at the work and seeing you talk about it. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of fun. I mean, you, 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 had, you kind of owned the, the main table in the house while we were talking about those cupboards that you had brought mm -hmm. and you needed to, because all the artwork was really oversized. And I thought it'd be great to kind of carry over that conversation, Definitely. Uh, you know, because that was all a lot about process and things. And so really, you know, my first question for you is, you know, how, how, are, how do you see things differently today from when you started? You were just telling me that you're almost at uh, that 30 year part uh, time period with Marvel, right? So you've been in the business for quite a while. So what, mm -hmm. what were those early 90s like, you know, in terms of your the way you tackled the production process versus how you're working today? Well, the, the, the production process is, is completely different because, you know, you work in Photoshop, you work in, you know, part digitally, part conventionally. Um, back then, uh, you know, it was it was pencil and paper. Mm -hmm. But the the interesting thing is um, that I worked a lot with a Xerox machine. You know, if, if I drew a figure and the head didn't quite work out well, I'd throw it on a Xerox machine. I bought my own Xerox machine, right. and I would blow it up and trace it off. So so the way I worked back then is very similar to the way I work now. Although you know, technically it's completely different. You know, and it's quicker and it's better. You know these days mm -hmm. so uh you know that that's it, it, it's different in that you know another way it's different um the style because you know i was taught obviously by my dad um that you have to try to make your work color proof you know uh these days in, back then you know rendering and putting grays and and blacks and all that but these days you can't make a color proof you can turn you know the colorist can turn anything into anything else you know they can blur a drawing and there goes your drawing right. you know there there's times you know there's times and places for you know for that type of effect um but you don't have control over it mm -hmm. um so so you know back then there was you know a lot more rendering these days you can leave more open to color you know more open to effects you know uh there's effects that you can do uh with digital linking that are very time consuming or difficult to do um conventionally yeah so there's you know there, there's a lot a lot different but really it's for me it's it's all about the story you know re, the, this is all like icing on the cake you know it, it you know you can do this you can do this you can do this but if the story doesn't dictate the story dic dictates to me how i handle the art mm -hmm. and and that's kind of what you know what i've concentrated on my my whole career well, that's good. You were you were talking earlier about uh, you know the storytelling and the way you handle a page. It's not worth you don't do things for effect. So you, you don't put in a splash page because it you just want to make a splash page out of it. The story doesn't you know really mm -hmm. uh, need it. Right. You'll you'll pass it up. Right. Right. You're never really thinking about it in those sorts of terms. You're you're and when you're when you're going through that process, how do you work with the writer and kind of pitch them like after? Because I think when we talked at the uh, at MegaCon. 
last month, you had talked about storyboarding things out a lot in advance, but mm -hmm. I mean, do you then show them the storyboards before you jump in and actually start doing the finished pages? Well, they're, you know, they're not called storyboards, um, but prelims. they're called, they're called prelims or thumbnails. thumbnails okay. You know, when, when I layouts or thumbnails, thumbnails are, are smaller because, you know, they're called a thumbnail because they're small drawings, then layouts are a little bit bigger, but no, I don't generally, you know, unless, you know, I don't change the story. Mm -hmm. I'm not adding characters. I'm not taking characters out. I'm telling the story to the best of my ability. Um, I may move panels around to give uh, a little more room to what I feel is a, a dramatic moment. If I want to do a splash page, I'll squeeze some panels over, you know, onto the page before mm -hmm. or the page after. Um, double page spreads, I love doing those um, because you have more real estate to make something bigger, you know, whether it's in the form of, you know, multiple panels or a big two page splash. Right. Um, so, you know, once, once the writer finishes their job, now it's my job to tell the story to the best of my ability. And, you know, again, I respect the work that the writer does. Um, I don't, I don't want to change the story. I just want to enhance it because, you know, a writer writes it and we're looking at words. It doesn't always translate the way he envisions it, it could. And sometimes you, you can't draw what they're asking for right so you have to pick and choose you know what what you you know what you feel is the best way to tell a story so is there are there instances where you leave an effect up to the colorist or or, or something along those lines or do you you know like, like you said earlier blurring things mm -hmm. uh back in the mid 90s you had to draw that out yourself and and not uh but today if you want something like that put in there mm -hmm. do you still draw it or would you leave that up to somebody else to kind of tweak it out and i would try effect? to draw it and yeah. not leave things to chance mm -hmm. you know especially i mean if it's an important part of the story i i don't leave it up to the colors right um but you know sometimes you know the guys that i work for, work with colors uh you know we're talking about colors um, they're such a they're at such a high level. I give them very few color notes because what we're doing is it's it's a collaboration. Um, and you know, I do my job and I want to see what they come up with. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to uh, you know tie their hands hands behind their back, you know, as they're working. You don't want somebody over here saying, Oh, yeah, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. I want to see what they come up with because a lot of times they come up with something that I would have never thought about, mm -hmm. you know, thought of. I said, wow, that that's really cool. I like that. Sometimes they may go a little too far. And, and fortunately, you know, I get a chance to look at the coloring uh, before it goes to print. And, you know, I, I may have to pull them back a little bit. But that's also my approach with drawing. You know, I want to push it and push it and push it until they say, hey, you, you went too far. You know, come back to reality a little bit. You can't do that, mm -hmm. you know. So that and that has really been my approach since the beginning, you know. Sure, sure. So when your father said, uh, "Make your art co color proof," I mean, what what kind of direction was he giving you in in, in making something color proof? Because in the '90s there was a, uh, you know, coloring wasn't the best, right? And in the and earlier than that, the '80s and, and '70s when your father was working, yeah. it was even worse, right? Yeah, so yeah. so what what did he mean by that, and uh, and how did you kind of tackle it to make your artwork color proof back then well you're you're making your work color proof is you know the black and white has to you know all the grays have to be in there all the all the shades of gray all mm -hmm. the, the black should be in there um the separation between foreground middle ground and background should be there in in the black and white so the background might you know say you have uh, a lot of blacks in the background in the foreground you can't put a lot of blacks because it won't separate it'll merge with the background right um so, you know, making a color proof is if they put one, if a, a wash over the whole thing, it's still going to read, you know, foreground, middle ground, background. Interesting. You know, but yeah. today, you know, all bets are off, you know, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times a colorist, you know, may take a black background and lighten it up because, you know, because of the atmosphere. So it looks further away. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes, you know, not as great, you know. Sure, sure. I'm having a hard time looking at you and then trying to look, <laughs> pay attention to the chat. I almost feel like we should be just looking at the camera, yeah, yeah. Adam, because <laughs> otherwise I'm going to miss. Uh, yeah, because one thing I wanted everybody to know is we're happy to take questions, but I'm not going to be able to take any questions because I'm not looking I at know. the chat. I'll right look now. at. How about if I look at your? You I, know, what I'm looking at now is my belly. That's what I'm looking at. I don't well, want to look at that. Yeah, <laughs> just sit, lean forward. Yeah. It'll make you I'll look thinner. There, that's better. I want to look. There. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, that, well, this might, who knows? Well, again, I, I'm learning th on this one, but, but so that's pretty cool. I mean, I never would have thought of it like that. Like if you just put a flat color across whatever you did, it should still read as well as if they actually put the, uh, the colors down properly. Yeah, yeah. That that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. I mean, but you know, and I'm sure that's one of the, that's an old timers lesson, right? Where they, you know, that's one of the things that they, they learned over time. If you, you know, after seeing their stuff print poorly, um, you know, they had to come up with some some rules to follow in order to hopefully yeah. get the best product out of their work. Mm -hmm. And another way, I mean, there was uh, Zipitone, which, you know, it looks retro now and you can put it down digitally. Yeah, you know, it was super easy. Um, but, you know, using the use of Zipitone was another way to, you know, put a gray down quickly instead of doing all this cross hatching because, you know, Oh, wait a minute. You're telling me that was like a shortcut. <laughs> I, I thought it was really done for effect. I mean, I love my, you know, my sixties and seventies right? pages with the zip and tone on there because I thought they were trying to do something special. You're just, you're trying to tell me that that was like a, a gray tone shortcut. Uh, absolutely. You know, and, and that zip and tone doesn't last 30 or 40 years, you know, it turns gray, it gets brittle, it comes off, you know, it's horrible. Also there was this stuff called uh duo shade. Yes. Yeah. Um, the dual shade boards, right? Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. like it was like magic. You know, you have two different chemicals. You know, and then and you put down one chemical, one duo shade tone comes up, and lighter, darker. You know, the other one is, and uh, you know, there was there, that was really fun. Mm -hmm. That was really fun. I'm just so disappointed now. I'm going to look at my artwork totally <laughs> differently now. <laughs> I mean, I really thought that you know that I mean, it did for effect. Yeah, like they were. Well, it is were, an effect. I know, but it they were thinking effect. about how it like worked well on the page and how it would. But I, now I'm just thinking about it differently now. Oh, you know, I'm sorry you're ruining it for you. Dang, but I do like I do like <laughs> duo shade though. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. I think it produces a really cool effect. I've got a few pages that are done with duo, duo shade. Yeah. I, I recently had an art restore uh, fix a piece of art for me, and I was showing her my, my portfolio. She saw that duo shade. And she was like, "Oh my god, I don't know what I, how I would ever fix anything that was you done on, on this can't. board." Yeah, right. And she she's like, "I hope I hope you never have any damage, you spill anything on this because you're done yeah. for." Yeah. She had never seen any you know anything like that. She's like, yeah. "I hope they don't make this yeah, anymore." Yeah. And I'm like, "I don't think they do." <laughs> you know what also comes to mind? I mean, there's a dozen different techniques. I mean, my dad. Loved to play around with stuff. Um, he, there was this board called Coquille board. You ever hear of that? No. Okay. It's it, it's like I think another name for it is pebble board. Okay. Um, I've, I've heard of that pebble board. So you, you do your black and white drawing, and then okay, because the reproduction wasn't sophisticated enough to pick up pencil or half tones. Mm -hmm. You know, like like a tonal drawing. Right. It, it wasn't that sophisticated. So what they would do is. The, the the paper had a texture that's why it was called pebble board and you take not a wax what kind of pencil some like a black um waxy pencil there's a there's a name for it i can't think of it right now um and it would just pick up it would be completely black almost like you know as black as ink mm -hmm. and it it would just hit the surface of the 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 bumps in the paper the pebbles so it would create like a almost like a pencil texture right um, without, you know, without just a, um, you know, a flat, a flat color, almost like, you know, like, uh, a zip of tone with little dots. Right. You know, and, and I remember my dad would do that a lot with covers. Like if you wanted like a ghosty image behind two characters in the foreground, you do it in like, you know, coquille board. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Hey, a uh, question from Jason. He, he's a big fan. Okay. Uh, what is it? He wants to know, Adam, I own the first image of the feral Wolverine. Did you come up with that design all on your own or was it the writer's <laughs> direction? Yeah, you can blame me for it. <laughs> is, is, is it the feral one like with the without a nose or? Because oh, they're probably pretty close. Wait, yeah. Is that the one? I think the that's nose? the one he's referring yeah, yeah, to. Yeah. yeah. Well, I apologize. And I've apologized to many people about that design. <laughs> I was a big fan of, um, you know, all the image guys. You know, right. They have guys that went over there, love, you know, love their work. And um, uh, Dale Keown did this character called, he didn't have a nose. Oh, what was his name? Pitt. Pitt, yeah. right. So I thought, wow, that looks really cool. Now, now you know, Wolverine, he, he, you know, he gets really feral because he continues to mutate. Mm-hmm. Oh, why doesn't he, his nose mutate off? <laughs> you know, it's like you got to be careful. What you, you know, so I, I, I did that, and and 
I hated it after I did it, but it was too late. It went to print. And, and after that, I actually put like a handkerchief over the top half of his head to cover his nose. Cause I, I really, I really didn't like it, you know? And then finally it took the handkerchief off and, and, uh, you know, there was his nose again, I guess, you know, I forget what happened story-wise, but, uh, you know, he's the process started to reverse or, or whatever. Right. Right. Uh, well, there you have it. There you have it. <laughs> um, you just blame uh, Adam for that one. Yeah. So, uh, well, that's interesting. I mean, are, were there any other, you know, have you ever, ever had any other mistakes with characters that you were that embarrassed about? Or, Not you, that I'm going to admit. <laughs> all right. Because you haven't no. been called on those yet. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, of course you make mistakes all the time. I yeah. mean, the, the, the amount of drawing and, and you guys know <laughs> the amount of drawing and characters that we have to do. There are, you know, you try your best to, to, to have the, you know, the costumes, uh, um, consistent, you know, the characters consistent, the hair consistent. Um, I mean, that's why God invented editors, you know, to, to keep an eye on, right, things exactly. because, you know, because I'm just drawing it, you know? Um, so it, it, it's difficult not to make mistakes, you know, and then there's coloring errors, mm -hmm. you know, and there's so much, there's so much drawing and so much nuances and storytelling and lighting and details, you know, I'm sorry, but you know, you're not going to get Spider-Man's, you know, color wrong on his head, but if he's got these, you know, the new costume with these, you know, these circles on, on here, right. You know, and his arm is, is looking this way. Well, you missed a couple of, you know, it's just, it's just part of it. Exactly. You know? yeah, yeah. Well, I was looking at one of the pieces we have for sale, a Spider-Man piece. And I'm like, yeah, I took a shortcut on that, on that spider webbing there. Yeah. On a, on a leg or, yeah. or on a split. I'm like, that's, yeah. but that looked okay. Yeah. You know, I didn't, it didn't, I didn't, it didn't bother me. Yeah. But, it, but you're right. It's funny. I've seen Colossus when he's like in uh, metal form, have his legs drawn with a flesh color. So many yeah. times. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mistakes yeah. happen all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now to take a step back, um, this is comic art fans, it okay? Is, yeah. Not comic storytelling fans, you know. <laughs> although they do go hand in hand, they do. Um, my point is that if you're reading the story, mm -hmm. chances are you're not going to see that stuff. You know, you're going to be you're going to be you know uh, into the story, reading from panel to panel. See what the you know. Hopefully the you know the the drawing isn't so bad that you know that it breaks you out of that that you know that fantasy of the story. But you're not going to look at every little nuance, you know. So there are, yes, there are shortcuts that you can take. There are things that you can do where they're not as important. You don't have to put as much detail in a part of the drawing that that's not important. Right. You know, it, it, you know, it can gloss over. There's guys that, you know, artists that 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 do it really, really well. My dad, you know, I'll keep talking about him. You guys get used to me talking about my dad. Um, there was this one example, you know. And not, you know, no one can draw, you know, perfectly all the time. Mm -hmm. It's just impossible. You know, with the amount of drawing, there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be errors. Um, but don't call my dad out. On it, you know, there was just one, one cover that he had done. Um, so in, in the foreground, there was uh, uh, a bayonet sticking in the ground. There was a helmet on the bayonet. And, and I guess maybe it was Sergeant Rock in the background. But you know, the character in the background was screaming upset about something, mm -hmm. you know, classic, you know, Joe Kubert. Yeah. Um, and I said, you know, the character in the background, I said, Dad, his, his eyes aren't here. Now I can see myself. His eyes are like over here. They're not like in the in the middle of head. He goes, oh, I did that on purpose. I wanted the guy to look like he's looking around that bayonet. So he, he put the eyes over here. I said, <laughs> sure. Okay, you know, Dad. Okay, Dad. <laughs> you know, I'll use that one sometime too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> see, but, that, but that's uh, as comic art fans. I mean, we we see all those things. I mean, I, I, yeah. I think I always saw them in comics when I was a kid growing up because you know, I went yeah. high school and art school. Yeah. But that's the difference. I think your average comic reader might not might not notice those things because they're right. not. And it's not like we're picking those things apart. But we love the whole process. We right. love we love we love like me. Yeah. Right. So those yeah. things th those things do stand out. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. I mean, and, I mean, they, they, they hit you upside the head when yeah. and, and the Colossus legs is the one that always gets yeah, yeah. me because I see it. You know, like one out of every 12 issues yeah. back in the day would yeah. have his legs flesh color or yeah. his arms flesh color, but yeah. his legs, you know, it just was, it just never, you know, I don't know how it happens. You think mm -hmm. that because an editor had to like see it too. How many eyes, but you know, are on He something. slept late that day. You know? 
<laughs> what, exactly. what, it happens in movies too. You know, maybe, you know, it happens rarely, but you know, there, cause there's a lot more eyes on it. Mm. You know, maybe there's a little bit of a microphone or, you know, the person that had a milk mustache in the background doesn't have a milk mustache this time, you know, what are, right, whatever. The coffee cup in Game of Thrones, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> um, well, that's, uh, that's funny. I'll, and I'll be, I have to say about your father. Now, I, I am a Marvel guy through and through. I, I never read DC, except for some Perez stuff, um, Crisis on Infinite Earths or Teen Titans. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and I, I can't even say that I read any of your dad's stuff, but, but I love his work so much. I want to buy a Hawkman page so badly. Yeah. And if I ever have the opportunity to, 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 just get one. I'm going to. Yeah. His, yeah. Uh, his work. Is I brought so one amazing. for you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other thing is, uh, you know, his work is just so amazing. I, I was never into war comics. You yeah, know, yeah. I wish I was. But yeah. you know, my, all you my, and you know, you and me both. <laughs> yeah. My my uncles who you know, so guys who were like 20 years older than me. That was all the. That was really what they read mostly. So they were always around. But I never really got into that. And I know that there's so much of your dad's work out there in the you know in that genre. Of storytelling but, but yeah hawkman every time i see a hawkman page done by your dad i you know i like i wish i could own that it doesn't you yeah. know because they don't come up that often unfortunately yeah. but they're so dang beautiful i i used to love he, he's done a ton of sketches like mm. like in a one of his you know his sketchbooks not i mean sketchbooks that that you know were published and and were sold or or uh, you know a hawkman hardcover whatever when he would draw uh, I mean, he could do it with his eyes closed. Oh. And when he did it, I said, you know, wings are not really easy to draw, but he would knock that out with a, a twig and it would look like great, mm. you know? Yeah. I just saw uh, this this guy. Uh, hey, Josh. <laughs> Josh Sloniker. Oh. Rocking the beard these days. He, oh, okay. he was a student at the school. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Sweet. And uh, hey, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Good guy. I thought about growing in a beard today to kind of work this out, but I I, I, I can't grow a beard, unfortunately. Yeah. But you, yeah, well, it's funny because I think like your profile pictures all around on uh, the internet don't have you with a beard. Yeah. So yeah, people. Who Some of them they do. The, the older ones don't. Mm -hmm. Older ones don't. So uh, so you know you, you did bring some art that I did. Uh, that that isn't for sale, but yeah. I, I wanted to show you know I want there's. They're they're huge, everybody. So I think yeah. just being able to take a look at some of these pieces would is going to be special. But uh, you know, and everybody who was at my house in February got a look at, at certain things. But you've got an, an interior page over there. I do. That is. Do you want to get it? I, yeah, I'd love I'd love to show that one off because uh, anybody who's a uh, okay. a, a Wolverine fan All right. is going to just uh, have their mind blown here. <laughs> look at the size of this thing. Well, this is uh, this was from Wolverine Black, White, and Blood. And uh, this is actually 20 by 30. But I did all the pages, because um, this is a spread, I had to do it on larger, you know, the 20 by 30 size. All the other pages were 18 by 24. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, so that's that's what this is. And th this, was, this, this was really, in, I mean, I had a really great time drawing this. Um, I worked off of uh, Jerry Dugan's uh, plot. He wrote like a, a one or two page plot for the entire 10 page story. And I love, you know, working that way because it, it, it puts a lot of the onus of the storytelling on me and and the timing and, and you know, just figuring out, you know, the high points and leaving off on a, I mean, all my students, Josh, you included, you know, it, it's best to leave off on a little uh, um, cliffhanger. So when you turn the page and the page turn is very important. Um, but this particular page, what was I doing? Just cutting back and forth, so you know, Wolverine and Wendigo were fighting, and these panels here had to do with uh, the the discussion that these guys were, you know, they were in a um, a van, uh, you know, watching the action. I think remotely. I mean, it's it's amazing. But now, so I saw the question in there: why why the size? Uh, you know, why did you work on something this large when you? Well, why not? <laughs> Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it takes longer. It, yeah, it, that, the, yeah, exactly. You're not worried about deadlines. Okay. I'm not worried about deadlines. No, I am worried about deadlines. Well, this morning I woke up at four deadlines. Um, okay. Uh, I started, well, the interiors, I, I, I generally never do this large. The interiors, it just, you know, I'll, I'll never get it done. Um, but all my covers, I have been drawing uh, on 18 by 24 or 20 by 30, right? Uh, oversized. Um, this one I just decided to do because I was doing a lot of covers oversized, and I thought 
uh, I want to do the interiors oversized too. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think I also put some wash in here and, you know, I was having a really good time. I, 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 I get to a point and it, it may sound a little nuts, but I get to a point on a page where I don't want it to stop because I, I really, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I really so you're like having it. that much so time I, working so I, at I, it. Yeah. And I tell my editor, he says, Adam, man, you got, you know, you got to stop. You got to stop that. You know, <laughs> and then I say to my, you know, like Nick, well, I said, Nick, I, I didn't, I didn't want this job to stop. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to keep going on it. But well, that's, uh, I mean, you, you love your work you know, that, because clearly it doesn't feel like work when you're, when you're doing something like this. Now, I have to, I mean, this is just, it's just an amazing piece. And one of the things I like about this page and the storytelling you did here is just the, the, the balance on the panels. The fact that you've done them, you know, in the, uh, you know, equidistant sizes here. My favorite panel layout uh, from Marvel is just the uh, the six panel layout where they're all the same. I mean, I think it's, it's a challenging format to work in. It is. But... I love it because most of the the, uh, the artists that were working in that format knew it and could do it really well. And every mm -hmm. time I see it, I, I I just love it. So I look at this, and you're kind of employing it, you know that similar but more complex logic in your page, you know, in your page design and panel layout. It's just it's beautiful. Well, th this job I worked in a grid, mm -hmm. which is which is what you're talking about. Yep. Um, and this was a because another page, another two page spread I did, uh, these were all single panels. So it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by one, two, three, four, you know, eight by four. Um, so the whole story was in a grid. And, and you know, I, I like I, I like to challenge myself. I, I like to do, you know, I, I get bored easily and I want to do different, you know, depending on how the story, you know, what, what the story is about. Mm -hmm. I like to do it, it differently, you know. Um, so where where it originally came from for me anyway um when i did my hulk run with peter david uh, i forget what year it was a late 90s or something um there was a flashback issue mm -hmm. where it was you know it was a a, a, a company-wide event where you know people were going crazy with overlapping panels and this big the storytelling was was getting a little out of hand so they wanted to reel everybody back in and and institute this this flashback thing everybody's going to work in a grid you know uh six panel grid if if it works um so what i did was i worked you know i, I wanted to take it a step further like always um work in a four panel grid but if you know if if i wouldn't do just four panels i, I might uh divide a panel into two or to get the number of panels that the that the writer was asking for mm -hmm. on, on a page so i would but it was basically a four panel grid and i learned so much from from that exercise because these are all exercises you know trying to figure out and, and try to make it work um i learned so much from that exercise because what you're doing is rather than um um concentrating on different size panels and making it splashy that way you're concentrating more on the storytelling more on the the composition within the panel rather than the shapes of the panels themselves i was just going to mention that because you know on, a, on, a, on an action page like this i would expect to see wolverine's arm and claws you know crossing the panel border all over the place and not and, and nothing does and, and right. like you were just saying that really make, put, makes you focus on story right focus on the panel you know, tell the story well there. You don't need to, you know, break panels mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, display or render action. Right. You know, then, uh, yeah, wow. And this, and we talked about color, making a, uh, um, a, a page is color proof. This is color proof um, because I had to, I had to put all the tones in as much rendering and blacks as I could because this was only one color. What? I just see uh, Dylan Chitty said, great stamina holding it up, Phil. I was just thinking the same thing. It's like, wow, I haven't started shaking. <laughs> you want me to hold it? No, 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 it's good. You, can, you know, you need to be uh, pointing. And stuff, yeah. But, uh, but no, I mean, I, this, this is uh, an amazing page. And I love, uh, you know, like the, the light ink work that you did on here for the wash work on here and the motion right. and everything. Right. It's rather than drawing action lines, I mm -hmm. mean, you're doing it with, you know, in that way. I yeah. mean, it's just. It's and and, to behold. and that's that's the other thing when you know you asked before why are you drawing larger I, I do have a whole spiel on why I draw larger but but here um, you can be more free with uh, you know you're not as tight you know this I think I did with a with a sponge so I took the sponge and just you know put it over you know here you know because you can see the texture in here the texture in here right with some you know with a page that's eleven by seventeen 
you know, with panels like this, you don't have that that real estate to be able to, you know, and here I went completely, you know. Oh, yeah. Completely off. And up here, too, you know, of course, I clean that up later. Mm -hmm. But so, but something like this, I do scan it. You know, obviously, I scan it in when I send it up, but I, but I work on it digitally then, too. I start putting some tech, you know, further textures in and cleaning up and, and things like that. So it's, uh, you know. Josh Flanagan says I need an easel, but yeah, I think what you're just saying there, though, uh, Jason said, Adam, I know you have started to mix in some digital art. How do you uh, decide what pages are traditional and what are digital, or maybe just like what you were saying, where you're gonna you end up touching things up digitally, yeah, yeah. Uh, here or there? Yeah. Well, generally, I don't work completely digitally. Um, I, I have, and and uh, you know, I prefer not to. So it's it's usually a, a combination of you know between digital pencils and and inks. Mm -hmm. You know, digital ink sometimes, but it it, it 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 it's a funny question. You know, I don't even want to get into it. No, well, <laughs> I mean, clearly here, I mean, I can't see why you would do anything digitally on here other than to clean up. Mm -hmm. You know, where where you were just mentioning where you need to clean up where you went over with the uh, the sponge. But we, I tell you, when I scan it in, then I then I have the freedom. Say I wanted it, and I've done it before. This panel, I want the composition different. I want him a little bit bigger, prop mm -hmm. it a little. I have that, you know. So where where does it begin and where does it end? Right. You know. No. I, well, yeah. But do you, now, when you're looking at something like this, yeah. Do you do you look, it, okay? We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll share the duties okay. on this one. Okay. Uh, do you look at like this panel and just say you would have rather gone in closer? I mean, do you? And and is it because uh, you feel it's not telling the story well on the panel, or because uh, when I look at this, I'm looking at it as an overall piece of art. You know, I mean, we all we all. Mm -hmm. we, we're fans of the art, we're, and we're also fans of the sequential storytelling that go into it. So, so I'm always looking at the overall piece. You know, sometimes one panel on a page might make me not want to buy it because it's just it, it throws the whole piece off. And, you know, mm -hmm. as a whole piece for me, unless it's something special like this in, in the story, you right. can kind of disregard one bad panel. Right. But when you're looking at these things, I mean, do you do you kind of pick it apart and just say, I would have rather because you you know, say you started here and you literally worked over there and you realized I should have done something. You know, I should have done his face differently here or gone in closer to his eyes. I mean, is that where you would use the uh, something you know digitally to just resize the, mm -hmm. uh, the image? Yeah, yeah, I, I would, or I may fix a face I didn't like, you mm -hmm. know, because digitally it's really easy. I mean, I'm looking at a panel like this. It's so easy just to select this panel and make it bigger or smaller. I generally don't do because that means I'd have to, re, you know, extend the art, which, which sometimes is a, is a pain. But, um, you know, and, and I'm looking at this. Well, what if, you know, what if I put a reflection in his glasses, you know, mm -hmm. as, as, you know, because every time, you know, when you put a page down, and look at it the next day, you can, you know, you're looking at it with a fresh eye. So, you know, new things come up, you think about new things and that, that you may not have, you know, thought of uh, while you were working on it. So those those kind of things, you know, happen all the time, like this panel here, it might have been better if it was really if it was big, and it just like his eye took up the, you know, the, the, the uh, majority of the panel, I could try it out digitally and say, Oh, I, I don't like it, you know, right. and, and go right back you, to it. Yeah, you know, well, that makes sense, but then, uh, but that's that's a different, you know, it kind of goes back to our original question about, uh, you know, what, what things were like thirty years ago versus now. You couldn't do that. You'd have to cut a panel and put it over there and redraw it. Now today, you have the the luxury of fiddling around with it before mm -hmm. you pass it along. Well, I, I have done it. You know, you take a Xerox. Some of the Xeroxes, like you know, back then, I would make, I would blow up the Xerox and paste it down, and or you know, stat machines. They, you know, they did it all the time. Old, you know. Um, who had a stat machine at their house, but you know, with a Xerox machine, you can, you know, you can, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's giving me a hard time about our I format mean, here. Well, just, uh, well, so, well so, yeah, Mikhail's I'm not even I, paying attention I need to that. More, I, now we understand. I have a better understanding of uh, this sort of setup and, and without question, but no, this is, yeah, this you better pay attention to what people are saying. I should. Right? I mean, well, there, there's, there's plenty of questions coming in. You know, James wanted to know how big is your scanner? Uh, yeah. I'm assuming you must have some, uh, like an Epson, like I know Epson makes like a really large. Mike scanners, uh, twelve by seventeen. No, wait, wait. Yeah, um, eleven. Yeah, twelve by seventeen. So I like we talked about this. I piece it together. Oh boy, that is yeah. a lot of work. Not really. No, no. Okay, no. so you don't feel it's a lot of work. No, no, it's it's not because um, well, my my good friend uh, Gene Scrocco, 
and and she's married to Greg Hildebrand. Greg Hildebrand, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they have giant paintings, but they scan it in, you know, in into Photoshop, and there's a thing called in Photoshop called Photo Merge. It's yeah. automate. Photo merge. I've never which, used it, but it oh, works. Oh my God. It's like magic. You push a button and because I'm piecing <laughs> it together. And like I said, I, I can't do this. It's too much work. But it's like one button and, you know, 90% of the time it works perfectly. Okay. Yeah. All so, right. hey, I'll trust you. And I'm, yeah, yeah. your editors are trusting you when you do it too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but now you just said with with this particular book, didn't you say that you did the other ones, that, uh, the other pages, twelve by eighteen, or, or were they all done oversized? They were 20 all by thirty. They were all oversized, not twenty by thirty, but um, the the regular pages. I think, I think they were um, eighteen by twenty four, or, or okay. half of this. The, the, right. All the other pages were were this size, whatever size that okay. is. I, I think it's eighteen by twenty four. Wow, this is uh, pretty amazing. I know some some collectors out there who who wish they were uh, here right now. <laughs> they had the opportunity to see this thing in person, but because uh, we didn't have a scan of this, we I didn't know that Adam was what what Adam was going to bring, so we didn't. Uh, I'm not able to show better scans of these. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you're just going to have to uh, pull up the comics and look yeah, yeah. at these in better detail. But yeah, no, this is this is beautiful. Thank you. Um, let's see. Oh, that's all right. We're okay. We're okay. We're okay. The art was not damaged. The cap was on. <laughs> Uh, a couple of comments. Uh, Daniel just mentioned that uh, he thought it was cool that you posted all your CGC in-house remarks that you did. His was uh, one of them, so awesome. he's very happy with that. Uh, Wes Stefan was curious what you think about how you know where our prices are these days on on your mm -hmm. vintage stuff in particular. I mean, uh, I mean, I, well, everything from the '90s is hot now, and I think it's we've talked about it a lot on this channel. You figure. Guys who, and gals who were in their 40s were eating up comics in the you know in the 90s, and so they've mm -hmm. got a little bit more expendable income. And the 90s are like the, the hottest segment in original art collecting today, as far as uh, I think seeing things appreciate in value. Mm -hmm. and the silver, you know, things in the 80s and 70s and 60s are still you know where they should be and, and growing appropriately. But the 90s in the last three to five years just saw a huge spike in the value mm -hmm. of the pieces. There, I think finally because those kids who were reading it came of age and had cash. So, I mean, what, what do you think of that when, you know, you I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's amazing. Who one. wouldn't? Jesus. <laughs> but, but I mean, who would have thought, you know, I mean, the work that, 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 you know, that I had brought some old stuff, um, that the value of those things would, would be as, as high as it is, you know, but like you said, it was, it was popular back then. Um, people had a, a an emotional attachment attachment to it when those pieces uh come up for sale these these older people now have some disposable income right and and you know and it, it, it goes on so you know i'm not i, I mean, won't complain and at the end of the, right i mean and the thing is you've held on to a lot of your artwork but whether I mean, you, you, you joked. I thought it was because you know you you were being savvy and wanted to. It just no, you just no. it, it just kept. I didn't have time. I, right, exactly. You know, I'm I'm producing the work, and and not not to cut you short with what you're saying. Yeah. But the work that I do is not. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, but it's not for collectors. It, mm -hmm. The the work that I do is is for Marvel. You know, I draw because I love to draw. I love to tell a story. Um, but they're the ones who cut my paycheck, you know, so, you know, and, and, you know, this, this harkens back to my dad also, you know, the, the I mean, they threw it away early on. They didn't, you know, even say that stuff, True. but the artwork itself, you know, there's paste ups, there's white out, there's this and that, as long as the reproduction is clean, that was the most important thing. Um, and the, you know, and the, you know, obviously the, the story has to be told clearly, but, um, but these days it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a different thing. It seems, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I get it. Back in the day, the publishers were more concerned with having a good uh, stat versus the original art. You know, they would keep the stat and yeah. the original art would get thrown in a file somewhere because they just wanted to have a good reproduction to work from if they ever wanted to reprint the book or whatever. Right. Right. And uh, I mean, I kind of get that, but at the same time, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, there's a lot of lost <laughs> art out there, especially, yeah. you know, from DC you know, that uh, you, you'll just never see. So I'm sure a lot of your dad's artwork never got returned. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was probably because it was thrown out, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. But the, the ones that were returned, yes. you know, it, it's like uh, Scott Doombeer's uh, oversized 
books. The artist so, editions. Yeah, the artist editions. Those are amazing to see because you can't get any closer to the original art than than seeing that in in his books. That that is very true. That yeah. is so true. But yeah, but you're you know you stuck a fork in us when you said I'm not doing it for you guys. So I have to say because everybody <laughs> everybody out in the audience that is a comic <laughs> art collector was like, oh, why did he he, he had to say what I, was I'm, uh, what was on our minds? Is that is that the truth? But I, I mean, but that's okay, right? I mean, you know, we as collectors, you know, sometimes because we're fans and that means we're fanatical we, we feel like uh we don't feel like we're owed things but we feel like we should be able to get anything that we want right i mean if we and, and it just doesn't work like that in the real world and that's okay yeah you know and i think yeah. that, that in, in its own way it makes things more desirable yeah be, you know and maybe that's that it makes it even worse because building on itself because it's like it's so hard to get certain pieces from you some pieces people may never be able to get from you because mm -hmm. you, you know you love them too because much. i got them and i want to keep them right off. right exactly <laughs> but I, I, the the great thing about the business that we're in is that I have an emotional uh, attachment to the work. You have an emotional attachment to the work. Right. It's it's really not just about the art. It's what's happening with the art. It's mm -hmm. the story that you have an emotional attachment to. Also, you know. So I love going to conventions. I love like we're doing now. I love chatting back and forth with people that that you know you have that commonality. You know, with with the fan and and. Uh, you know, it's not just art. It's not just a picture hanging on the wall. There's a story and, and, and you know, an attachment to it, an emotional attachment to the characters and the story that you remember when you were a kid and you got to have that art and, and, you know, and not if you can't get it out of my hands, you <laughs> but, you know, it, it's really, it, it's an unusual setup, you know, which I don't think, you know, happens with, you know, all forms of art. Yeah. No, no, it it doesn't. I mean, well, a lot of art is being is being done to sell. I mean, and there's different there's some different motivations out there for all creators, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm sure there, are, you know, of course, there are comic artists that are thinking about the aftermarket for the pieces that they draw. And there's well, other ones that you have to. And well, the, yeah, you know, you have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but does that? Oh, well, see, so, you know, do you think about that while you're working on a book? I mean, sometimes, yeah. But but for me, you know, I'm not going to do a splashy page big, you know, in your face character shot. Um, if the story doesn't warrant it, mm -hmm. I, I just don't want to because, because my focus is the story, mm -hmm. you know, and, and if the reader can't follow the story or like, what the hell is this splashing image of, you know, of, of, uh, storm in there when, when, you know, she was a little background character. Well, I really like drawing storm, you know, I want to, you know, and I could sell the page, but, you know, and I know guys that would do that and, and that's fine, you know, um, but that's just not my thing. Mm -hmm. Well, we got a lot more questions that rolled in here. Uh, one of them, I mean, something we've been talking about, but we'll probably talk about another time. This is uh, how awesome is it to see your art at Islands of Adventure outside of the Spidey <laughs> ride? It's my favorite thing about the park. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, it's probably my favorite thing about the park. One of the, one of the first times. You're just saying like, that because I'm here. No, you know? no. It's, <laughs> I, I went, when was it? It was like in 2002 when I came to Megacon with my son. We paid for like a special, um, you know, behind the scenes uh, VIP private night. time. Yeah, yeah, it was like a VIP night. It, yeah. it, it was so much fun because we had all, that whole area of the park up to ourselves. And it felt like that, too, because, I mean, there might have only been like two or three hundred people in there mm -hmm. to have all of the, you know, islands <laughs> of adventure to yourself. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, back then I didn't know it was your art. I mean, I, you know, I, I figured that out over time. I think I've seen like pre, you know, some prelim pieces and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. how did that job come about? I mean, I, I, I got a call. Yeah. Dana Moore said uh, he was the guy in charge of, of divvying out, you know, the the uh, um, the commercial jobs that would come into Marvel. And he called me and, and I said, you know, are you kidding me? Of course I'll do that. You know? Yeah. Heck yeah. So it just, you know, that, what that, was it like the first time you walked into the, into the park to, and saw your, your stuff that, you know, 40 feet tall, you know, Wolverine is what he's, he's gotta be at least 40 feet long. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just crazy. It was, it was incredible. And every time I go in there, it's incredible. And I, and you know, my family can't go on rides because you know, I'm lagging behind like that, you know, it, it's, it's a really cool thing. And I'm glad people like it, mm -hmm. but it, it's, it, you know, every time I look at it, it's, it's kind of an amazing thing. Well, I mean, the thing, thing is once your art gets out into the world like that, 
I mean, it, you know, it, that's that's different. Comics are one thing, but I mean, to be in an entertainment complex like that, that's like that, you know, millions of people go through that area every yeah. year yeah. and are exposed to it. I mean, and they say, who did this work? Because there's no credit on it. Well, but, but, but as <laughs> but, I know, but, <laughs> yes, but <laughs> I, uh, yeah, you did work your signature into a few I of those did. pieces, didn't all you? Of them. I mean, all, all of them, them, all of them, except the first one, because I didn't think of it. And the last one, because I had to turn it around really quick and I just, you know, it just knocked it out. So your signature did make it into all of them. Yeah. See, I've actually never seen, you know, I only read about that. I haven't been back to Universal since, it's been about two years since I've been there. Yeah, so yeah. I haven't been able to go and look. Yeah. But yeah, I'll, I'm gonna, I, I'd like to do that though. Just t take a picture of each one when I, mm -hmm. like, once I find them. So uh, mm -hmm. let's see what else was in here. Um, uh, let's see, Daniel mentioned it's cool hearing you talk about uh, published work, but uh, commissions. I mean, you know, it's, I don't think you do a lot of commissions, right? No, I don't. Or any. Um, or I do any. So, I, rarely um, because I'm busy. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have my, you know, I do interiors, um, you know, covers. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, if I have time to do a commission, I would rather spend that time doing a cover at work you know, getting a little bit ahead on, on my other work, um, you know, and the same really goes for, you know, for all the other uh, uh, things that we can do, mm -hmm. you know, I, I can go to conventions, I can, you know, um, just, just other things, but I, and I love going to conventions, but I limit it, my, the number of conventions, because, you know, you, you plan on it, uh, you know, six months ahead of time or four months ahead of time, oh, I'll have time, no problem. But whenever that happens it, it always happens at the wrong time right you always have something that's due on the monday and oh man i gotta bring my work to the convention which i almost always do yeah you know i'm doing it in the hotel room and even at a convention i don't take commissions because you know what i'm going back to my room and you know and doing work either i'm gonna <laughs> veg out or i'm gonna get some work done yeah you know i, I went to lake como and uh the, and we spent two weeks there i i have a mini cintiq that I brought with me, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I got the work far enough where I could, you know, where I could still turn in pages from, you know, from there. So, it, but it, it, it actually makes me feel good getting work done while I'm away. Because if you, you know, if I stop drawing for, you know, even a day, you know, much less two weeks, um, I'm, I get really rusty, you know, so I like continue. I, I like continuing to work. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you an artist that has to do like, Warm ups before you get started. No, my no. warm up is on the page. It's on the page. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I know yeah. some artists that do that. I mean, you know, the start yeah. of the day, they'll do a few warm ups before they dive into work. But you, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I'd like to because maybe I could do some, you know, sketches and commissions or whatever. But, you know, I just sit down and start working. Uh, let's see. Uh, might as well pull this one up. I haven't read it yet. Adam, I have the, the privilege of owning your cover to Hawkman 48 and homage to Gustav Klimt's The nice. Kiss. How did you come up with the idea of doing this as an homage? Um, I, I guess uh, I, I, love, I love Gustav Klimt's work. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know those covers that you're talking about. I think that, that was a limited color palette. Or, or maybe we're doing like a different color for, for each cover. There were four Hawkman covers that I did. Um, I think that was when I first went back to DC in like 2006, I, I, I stepped away from Marvel for, for three years, 2006, seven and eight. I never, I've never forgiven you for that. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so Gustav Klimt was just a, just an artist that I liked his work. And I, I'm always, you know, as an artist, you're always looking, you know, for inspiration and influences and, you know, and trying to incorporate that into your work to, you know, for myself to make it, you know, a little bit different, you know, something that you might not have thought about, um, you know, thought to do. And I said, oh, that, that'll work. Like, you know, let me, let me see if I can make that work in a cover. So I don't have the image. I wish I could pull up because I'm not familiar oh, oh. with that one either. Yeah. But, but I don't know. Um, but I'm a huge fan of uh, Klimt. You know, from yeah. that era, e Egon Sheila. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of artists. Uh, you know, but Clint, of course, had a lot. I mean, it's such a graphic style to yeah, begin yeah. with that um, I yeah. can see why a lot of artists might look to do homages on on his his approach to work. Well, look, the cover of that. What was the gentleman's name? Um, uh, Daniel. I think it was. Daniel. Or, no, uh, Carl. Carl. The the or cover Carl. that Carl yeah. was talking about. That image was uh, Hawkman, and I don't think it was. I don't know if it was Hawk Girl, but. Um, 
another character in an, like full two full figures in an, in an embrace. Mm -hmm. So well, that, that that you can't get any more. I mean, if you're going to do an homage on something, it would have to be something like the kiss. Then, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I don't want to miss any other important questions here. And we still, you know, I, see, look, we're already at 50 minutes. I said that, <laughs> that, I, that is, isn't that crazy? But it happens every time. That that's why, I, that's that why is, I told you an hour to begin with. You know, when you told me that this thing was going to be like two hours, I'm like, I can't, you know. Yeah, I know. I know. It's well, that's why these are fun. I mean, that's why, like you talked, I mean, this isn't going to be the last time we do this. Everybody, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're, we're, we'll, we'll really plot fun. and plan. And one of the things I did want to let people know is, you know, we're going to show you the artwork that, uh, uh Adam's brought. But you know, if there are pieces from some of the uh, from titles that you're interested in, and, you know, I mean, I would email me after the show, Bill at ComicArtFans.com, and just let us know sort of what you might like to see. You, you know, Adam might not be interested in selling anything from it, but but we're knowing, looking for it. Or, or <laughs> you know, that's the, you know, <laughs> and, and I tell you, I'm I'm aware of the art market. Yeah. Okay. And and a lot of people come up. Oh, do you have this piece? Do you have that piece? Um, I, 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 you know, the value of some of these pieces are, are, are crazy, but in, you know, out of respect for the people that have spent a lot of money on the pieces that I have, I want to keep the value up. Mm -hmm. um, so I would, you know, people do come up to me and say, oh, do you have that piece, this piece? And I, and I kind of shy away from that. And now I'm going to lose all these people that are interested in buying a work, but whatever. Um, uh, I want to be in control of, what is going to be offered right you know and and you know i probably said it to the wrong audience but, no no but, but, but the but, thing is i think that's good because you're you're respectful of uh the you know the purchases that past buyers have made yeah um you know you could just unload everything all at once but you know we've seen that happen in certain markets there was a collector who owned a lot of uh George Perez's uh, crisis pages, right? And all of a sudden they went all, all and it was at a point in time where you could maybe buy them for between 500 and a thousand dollars range. And then all of a sudden we had a flood of, of that, those artworks. Out yeah, there. And, I, and some of them didn't hit, didn't hit 500 that would have hit a thousand the year before. Right. So you, you, I, it's good that, you know, right. you're mindful of that. And uh, it's not only just because you love the art, your, your artwork and you want to keep it because you're, you're actually thoughtful about mm -hmm. the investment that, past buyers right and if you did pay a thousand dollars for a george Prince, you know uh you know crisis page you know or you know or 1500 and then you see him you know being sold for like 500 bucks it's like you know oh, you know that's uh that's kind of sucks yeah uh yeah there you go and uh, james says uh personally i love that and i've never heard any artist say that oh but it but it is it's a, it's an important part of the whole process i mean you have to be respectful of uh your fans in that way too i mean i i, I agree i mean i think mm -hmm. i think it's it's a wise approach mm -hmm. but i still would say if anybody wants to you know at least make inquiries you can, <laughs> you can ask know. you can <laughs> ask right I, mean, ask. I did have a couple of inquiries before the show or questions like where yeah, yeah. was he going to bring this or that and yeah. i'm like no well, i previewed everything so they had and they had seen you know what was coming and uh, I'm like, no, what you saw is what you get. But, you know, sure, mm -hmm. I'll float a few things. It, it really doesn't hurt. I mean, I don't mean to, to, to sound like a hard ass or, or, or anything like that. Um, but, you know, it, it really doesn't hurt to ask. Right. Well, there you go. So, <laughs> yeah. Daniel says, I don't want to embarrass myself by emailing and not by. No, well, you know, it, it's fine to, to email about that. Uh, we won't mind. But um, and, and I know Jason said he has to leave. Maybe, Jason, maybe I'll start from like 20 and work my way down to one. Jason's a big X-Men fan, and, and I followed the same order that you oh, yeah, gave yeah. me. And yeah. all the X-Men art is at the back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could, we, there's no order. You know, you could. Well, right, so maybe we'll start at 20 yeah, yeah. and we'll work our way back. Okay. But before we do, before, yeah. we, you, before we do, why don't we show off to a couple of these covers? <laughs> I, and I we don't have to last... like, you know, but, but I think we should take a look okay. at them because these are the things that blew everybody's okay. minds when uh, you were here in February. Okay, so. This this one I, I happen to really like. That was uh from what was that Wolverine number five. Um you know it it's I, I like the graphic approach to this one. Wolverine uh is actually fighting, I think he was fighting um like a Dracula type character or, or something. And uh you know the, the image that was published. Um, I had actually in, in Photoshop, I multiplied some of the bats to kind of give it more, e even more uh, of a, a, a denseness of, of, of the bats. And 
when I was moving around a little bit, I saw a face in here, which I kind of enhanced. And, and when it was colored, um, it was, you know, it was further uh, clarified. But, um, yeah, so that that's that one. No, that's beautiful. And again, this is 20 by 30? Yeah, 20 by 30. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody wants to know. Claim will be in the chat, everybody. I, I know that I usually go over how we claim artwork during yeah. the show. Yeah. There's uh, no claim the on this one. But there's no claim on this one. No, yeah, these yeah. are not they, these are yeah, not these for are show and tell. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, yes. These are uh, just for your uh, benefit to see how Adam is working currently. Now, when, when you were over, I mean, I think I thought one of the interesting things you said was that you're working in this uh, the scale now because you can put more detail into the artwork that way. Be, and because you trust the printing process yeah. the, these days, the printing right. processes are so much better that right. it can get more detail into it. So you might as well draw bigger. It just makes your stuff look all the better when it gets scaled down. That's part of it. Okay. 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 That, that, you know, but, the other part of it is, do you know, Vincent Zerzula? I do. Okay. Um, so he had, you know, I hadn't been to his place. He had an event at Metropolis. Um, for for actually for for something else i can uh, i can go into it but that that's a whole nother story and he says adam don't you know what size do you generally work i said ah, you know 11 by 17. and i'm looking around and those walls and he, he says you know if you work larger you know you can get more for your originals and and this goes against what i just said i'm working <laughs> for myself but, but so be it you know yeah and i'm thinking you know a little light bulb went off and i was like oh if i draw larger it's really not that much more work you know, it is more, but, you know, so I started doing that. That's, that was the impetus mm -hmm. behind drawing larger. But now I do all my covers large because when I, when I got to see it printed, it, it, all the detail or most of the detail is showing up. And I think the images look better, you know, with, with, you know, fine lines and all the detail. So, um, I, I've been doing them all my covers either, uh, 20 by 30 or 18 by 24 mm -hmm. um uh since then you know because i i think they look better and i think they come out better well they and i have most of them i think i sold at, at a you know I, i've done at least 75 75 to 100 of those um you know i've sold maybe like two or three of them but we're, we're planning on having uh an event uh we, we talked i started talking about it now um part of the event that we had uh at vincent's place mm -hmm. was they were putting together they, they were looking for donors for uh my dad's archive at rit um i donated um everything that was in my dad's office at the school uh to our rit rochester institute institute of technology it's uh, i'm an alumni of that school for them to archive and in case you don't know what an archive is an archive uh is a place where it's more of a hands-on experience rather than like a, a museum where things are behind a case. You don't get to, you know, you learn from it because, you know, there's a little plaque there. But when it's archived at a, at a university, these are, it's used to teach artists. Um, and I, I wanted, you know, I couldn't think of a better place for my dad's stuff. And, and I'm not talking about the valuable things, although there are some valuable things that, that were donated. You know that are donated, um, but his pens, his desk, his mm -hmm. chair, his his tools. Yeah. You know that people can. You know, uh, I'm not sure exactly how it's going to be set up, but to have the opportunity to sit at the desk and just let this, you know, wash over you and and see. Oh, why did he put this here? And his notes and and this and that. It, it was in. It, it, it. That's where I wanted it to go, and and rather than you know, um, you know, being squirreled away someplace else. Wow. No, I mean, that's, uh, that's but, but, okay, I'm, I don't but, I was just thinking, um, and, and these pieces, they're going to have an opening for it. Okay. Uh, this September on, on my dad's 97th birthday, um, September 18th. Uh, and they're gonna, they're gonna have some kind of, you know, we're just, we're still discussing it, you know, the, the, the logistics of it, mm -hmm. but the idea is to, you know, revolve around the opening of, of my dad's archive. Um, have a show of some of my work and the larger pieces, you know, you really can't get a, 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 a feeling for what, you know, the size of these, unless you, you see it up, up close. Right. Um, even, even on your, you know, on, on here, it's, you still don't get an appreciation for it. So that's another reason why I've kind of kept a lot of these close to, you know, close because, uh, you know, I'm trying to, 
um, keep it for for something like that. Yeah, no, I mean that's fantastic. I, I'd like to be able to go to that if I could. I'll yeah. See it. Oh, September you might get it. You, you might get an invite. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll okay. see. <laughs> but actually, invites... it's open to the public. Oh well, It'll then, be, then, you know, then you... I can go whether yeah. I'm invited or not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, but that's something, you know, we always try to cover events, you know, like that with gallery openings, those sorts of things, because, uh, you know, there's not enough of those sorts of uh, right. events happening in, right. in the hobby that, uh, you know, glorify or, uh, you know, promote the, uh, the sequential arts. And I think, uh, you know, that's something that definitely I'd want to go to. So Because yeah. it's really part of history. Right. right. You know? so. Well, I think that's why we're finally seeing prices in the art comic art market finally getting where they're at people realize they're a part of our our history mm -hmm. you know and then so and i've always felt that you know if uh amazing fantasy 15 can go for two million dollars and there's right. you know, and there's dozens of you know decent co you know copies of those you know why isn't the original arts you know being that high or more you know because it's mm -hmm. one of a kind and uh yeah but I, I think we're finally but that's getting crazy that's a lot of <laughs> i know it's still crazy but i mean at least we're we're getting to that point yeah, yeah. you know and yeah. i think that uh because there's a lot of transactions that happen behind the scenes that aren't like the big notar you know notar you know notable notable yeah. uh ones that are on heritage or comic link or whatever right uh that change hands and you, and you hear about those and they're just as amazing you know the prices on things and uh and that's great though i mean i i, mm -hmm. I really feel it's because uh, you know of things like that of pr promotional stuff like this i think it's it's great that rit wants to you know has the space mm -hmm. and is devoting uh space to that and that you're not selling the coverage just so you can make sure you have a really great show there i think that that's yeah that's important plus i like them I, you know I mean, like they're like my children <laughs> you know but now you said you don't even have a portfolio big enough to store them no but i i, I just haven't gotten around to getting the sleeves now hey, all right now i want to show i want to Let's show just the other ones a little okay, quicker, okay, we'll just, quick just so you guys can be, be uh, for hours we, hours. we really could, but we want to get out of okay. the sale. We can talk a little bit after the sale. Here's one I really like. Who, who's not going to like the yeah, if you're a fan of Wolverine, yeah. uh, you know, or Deadpool. Oops, there, sorry. I'll help you with it. There we go. I, and I, I don't know how many, we, how many hands tall this is. It's a running joke in the, in the, in the forum here, but uh, <laughs> look at the size one, of this two, thing. Two, three, four. Yeah, twenty by thirty. It is huge. Yeah, yeah, that's just crazy. But, but you, you think? I mean, there's a if you look, there's a lot of detail that I, that I put in here. Even though it's large, I'm not, you know, although, although you know, I can get freer with, you know, with, with uh, you know, with the work. But you know, all this stuff shows up. There, you know, some stipple, and and also I, I you know, Marvel really you know, start to shake their heads sometimes. You know, Adam, you put the logo on the original i was just i was just gonna yeah. say i like it because you did the logo on it i like well they're, they're giving me the latitude to do it mm -hmm. um first of all uh but i like having the image interact with a logo you know it's part of the illustration so so you know that's that's why i put it in there is and plus it's a wolverine logo it's not like crisis on an infinite earth where there's a whole bunch of lettering it's just the you know it, it's fairly easy to render so does it sound better when i talk with the on the other side of the art i think the the art is blocking the mic <laughs> oh really i think that's why uh, <laughs> is that what they're saying yeah yeah well i bumped it when we brought it up oh, but, then, oh, but oh. then we were talking on this side of the art oh. and do you want to adjust it uh no no we're good now okay. as long as we hold the art forward yeah, yeah. the okay. mic's gonna hear our yeah, yeah. So that's fun. So there you go. It is not only is it large, it is sound dampening as well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah, no. Well, lesson learned. We're you know, I've never had uh I won't bump it. No, nope, yep. Okay. So that, I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll pick out one more. Let's see. Yeah, because there's a there's a stack over oh, there. Yeah, there's a stack. Okay, so this one. This this one uh yeah. there we might be. there we go. This was uh the cover for um the Marvel art of Adam Kubert. It's a hardcover that that Marvel published a year or two ago. Wow! So it was you know characters that that I'm kind of known for and that I felt like putting in there. Well, that's beautiful. This one? Did you bring this one? To the I don't think so. No, I didn't bring any of the thirty by twenties. Okay. Because I, I didn't. You know, there was only a handful of guys there, but I didn't want to overlap what what they had already seen. Well, I have to look at it from the back. I, I, I can see Thor, so I'm happy. I'm a big Thor fan. You got yeah, the yeah. thing on there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Magneto. Wow. This is uh, this is amazing. Yeah. It's fun, though. I mean, I, I like doing these 
you know, these images with a ton of characters because it, it's really like like putting a puzzle together and trying to figure out and, and overlap and, and now, whatever. Uh, you know, I've mentioned it, I've said it before, but do you really, when you're working on that, you have your drawing uh, you know, table in front of you, but you have to curl it up. Does that, was that true? I'll show you, I'll show you how I do it. Cause it, I just can't, I don't see how you can see the whole I, I work know, composition. On okay. I and, have to, I have to lower, I work on a lap board. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh no, they can now why, my fat leg. Um, now why a lap board too? Why, <laughs> why aren't you working on a drawing table like your dad? Because I'm, I'm more comfortable sitting back rather than like leaning over a table. And so I have a lap board and I sit back. So you pretty much work wherever you want in the house then at that point. I, I could, but you know, I won't. Okay. <laughs> you know, because I have four dogs, you know. Um, but the, you know, on something big, I have a big lap board and I lower my seat down because you know, when you're drawing on, you know, you, artists, it's, it's better if they work on an inclined mm -hmm. uh, surface because if they work this way, then then the uh, the image will be distorted and you'll draw it distorted. So you have to be perpendicular with the art. So in order for me to see the whole thing, I have to lower my chair down because my table is only this high. Right. I lower my tail down. But when I'm working, yeah, I, I fold it a lot. Like if I get to the top, I, I work like, you know, I work like that. I just, it's, un I, yeah, I can't believe that. Yeah. You get used to it. You know, it, it is a little more, you know, a little more difficult, but. Well, that's uh, beyond impressive. And I did want to, I saw somebody, uh, Brian McCall became a new member of the uh, channel. I appreciate that, Brian. Thank you so much. And if you're watching the show and you haven't given it a thumbs up, you should do that. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we don't do these, uh, you know, in person usually. But we will do it more and more. We will do it more and more. <laughs> and, uh, but if you like comic art and you like discussions with the uh, artists and creators, you know, we're doing these things around the channel all the time. So you should sub subscribe to the channel immediately. There's what, 235 people watching this show on a Sunday awesome. afternoon. We are so thankful. Tell you guys something will have something else better to do it, on a it's Sunday. A, I'm sure it's a beautiful day <laughs> you know, here. I mean, it is, you know, but, but they want to, they, they're, they're having great. a good time. Yeah. Cool. They, this is That's a, great. I'm happy. wonderful. Yeah. I'm happy. So listen, we'll, what, let's do the art sale. Okay. And then if we, you know, we'll see where that takes us. I mean, I, you know, we have 20 lots to look at today. Um, one of the lots has four pieces in it. A couple of them come with prelims or a few other things. So we'll talk about each one of those as uh, we go. I won't go from 20 to number one because I saw Jason say he's got, he's, he's got it covered. So you must have somebody in there that knows uh, which pieces from the preview mm -hmm. he's interested in and they'll take care of buying right. or trying to buy things. So let me go over the ground rules for the, uh, for the, uh, claim sale today. Uh, I just got to get to the right slides here. So uh, how to purchase. Well, it should say how to claim. We'll call it like that. But claims are going to be in the chat. They aren't emailed in to us. We're going to see them in the chat. Every lot that we're going to show you today has a number. So it's, they're numbered 1 to 20. So if you see something that uh, you want to get immediately, type claim and the lot number in the chat. So claim 1. You can claim something at any time during the show after we've shown it. So maybe you end up wanting to see all 20 pieces and then you want to go back and claim you know, lot seven or something. You're more than more than uh, you know able to do that. Just uh, keep, keep a pencil and paper nearby so you can maybe take notes while we're showing these things off. But I'll recap stuff that hasn't sold uh, when we get, after we go through the first 20. But if you've claimed any artwork, what I want you to do after the show is email me, bill at comicartfans.com. I want you to include... Uh, the lot numbers that you claimed. I'm writing your name down too, but it's just best to do that in the email. But please include your mailing address at the same time. It just makes things a lot easier for me when I've got to uh, you know, submit the invoices and get the art ready for shipment and all those sorts of things. So uh, payment is expected and it must be made within 48 hours of invoice. Now we do have a little wrinkle in that because Adam and I did talk about that in advance. Now we're we're willing to give you 45 days on some of the more expensive pieces. So if there if there's something in here that uh, you know is over a thousand dollars, you really want it, uh, but you need 45 days to pay. That's fine. But we would want a third down and uh, payment in full within 45 days of the show. So uh, it's not something that we do that often. But you know if you're if you love Adam's work and this is an opportunity to pick up something that's uh, a little out of your reach, that's you know what we're providing for you today, but uh, we will need the payment in 45 days and a third down. If you're paying with a credit card through PayPal, there is a 4% uh, service fee for US buyers and a 5.5 uh, percentage fee for international buyers. There's no fee with Zelle. And I can tell you, I did just sign up for a Venmo account. So uh, we can go that route too. There won't be any fee with Zelle or Venmo if that's the route you want to go. 
And if you really needed to send a check, because I know some people still like to send checks, I'm fine with that too, but uh, I'd want it in the mail by Monday. Now, as far as shipping goes, shipping is not included in uh, these prices. Uh, domestic shipping is $30, international $65. We handle all the shipping uh, here and we pack everything in Masonite. Everything is really you know, taken care of properly. Anybody who's bought from the, the channel since I've taken over fulfillment will attest to that. So uh, I can tell you we take good care of uh, the artwork when we're packaging it and shipping it. So so there's uh, the ground rules for the, uh, the sale today. I hope everybody understands that. And again, everything, is, claims are going to happen in the chat. Just say claim and the, the lot number and away we go. So um, I know we've got all the artwork here and then I've got slides for things too. Um, I don't know if we have the we don't necessarily unless somebody wants to see the artwork maybe we don't need to take it out of the portfolio i mean we we can but i think the scans mm -hmm. that that i got from adam and tracy are pretty good uh but yeah well here okay. we go we'll just get this thing started so and we'll talk a little bit about these because this is uh this first piece lot number one is uh it's priced at 750 dollars. this is from the 1996 fleer ultra on uh, onslaught set it's card number 42 it's the invisible woman and uh, you know, you, you did a lot of cool <laughs> artwork, you know, from this. I mean, there were, uh, there's X Men characters, and uh, well, we've got a claim already from Indu J. Thank you, uh, Anker. We sincerely appreciate that. But uh, tell me a little bit about this, you know, this job too, because this is a little bit early in your time with with Marvel. But you got to draw like a, probably some characters that you hadn't had the opportunity to work with before. Mm -hmm. I mean, right? That that had to be. Is that challenging or were you just like, you were just excited to be, you know, getting the chance to work on characters that you hadn't done before? Well, it, it, it was challenging. It, it's challenging anytime you draw a character you've never done before. Um, because really, you know, as an artist, as a storyteller, you, you have to act out these characters. You know, there's, there's, a, you're working with a blank piece of paper and it, it comes from, you know, comes in your head and out your hand. Um, so it, it is a challenge, but there's also the challenge of having to produce these things on, on a timely basis. So you don't really have time to, you know, to, to read up, you know, all on, on, you know, read all up on, on these particular characters. Sue Storm, I, I don't think I did Fantastic Four before this. Um, I, I handled a, a lot of the cards differently because these were, you know, this was really the, the, the beginnings of uh, computer coloring. And, and what they were doing is they, you know, my, my pencil and ink was no longer there. And it was digitally painted. Um, it, it, I think it looks pretty cool after it's done, but it, it still, for me, it, it took a little getting used to because it, it did look, you know, different. Sometimes I would, I would, you know, because all they needed was a, a pencil drawing, but I decided I want to put some ink in, so at least maybe I'll, I'll, you know, my style will come through in the end. Um, so that's that. That's what you're, and I put some pencil in because I I couldn't stop myself. I just you know sometimes like I said before, sometimes I don't want the job to end, and I and I I don't have to go that far, right. but you know I I do. Well, uh, Anker, we appreciate you picking this one up. So I assume you probably have haven't sold all the ones that you've done because you did so many of them, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, we sold. Um, I don't know how many. I, I would be guessing how many I did altogether. We'll say I, I did seventy or you know, or so. Maybe sold like 10, mm -hmm. something like that. No, well, interesting. So uh, Frank Robert Johnson just came in late. Uh, you know, we expect payment within 48 hours on most of the artwork, but for some of the pricier pieces, we, we were giving people up to 45 days as long as they put a third down, you know, immediately. So uh, that is how we're handling that. So, and, and this one, and I should have said it, I didn't have it on the slide. It, I noted it in the chat. You know, the image area is five by seven on a eight and a half by 11 board. Right. And anybody who's bought card art, that's pretty standard. So I, I, I and I know Ocker is a veteran and he was very well aware of that. I think most of the artwork we're going to see from here on out is all 11 by 17 or slightly larger. And I right. will definitely make note of that when I forgot to put it on the slide like I did with this one. But most of them, I think after a certain point, I put it on there. So, all right. Will there be anything that wasn't already shown in the email? Everything that we showed, basically the last email that I sent out is uh, was a preview of all of the artwork that we have today. So the 20 lots that we're doing um, were previewed in the email. We don't normally do that, but um, Adam and I talked about it beforehand and, and we both felt it was a good idea to preview everything to give everyone mm -hmm. coming in a good idea of what was here. But that's also why I suggested, you know, email me after the show if you think that, you know, 
Adam, you know, if you'd like to see Adam bring something to a future show and we'll, we'll make a list of potential things and it's up to him to determine whether or not he wants to yeah, make bring... me the bad guy. <laughs> well, I, Hey, I can't twist your arm, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, unless we do it at your place next time yeah. and then I'll be, that would be fun. Yeah. Hey, I wouldn't mind it. It would get me out of the house. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, all right, well, let's keep this thing going. So next okay. up we have, uh, let's see, here's lot number two. Uh, lot number two, we've got two, this this is one of two pieces from uh, your, your DC work. This is from Action Comics 845, it's page 15. It is done on 11 and a half by 17 two-ply Bristol. And this one is priced at $1,000. Uh, it was a, uh, a Bizarro issue, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It was, this was actually, I mean, this was a very special uh, um, series of, of books with Richard Donner and Jeff Johns, you know, writing it. Um, and, and again, you know, Superman, you know, my, my style, you know, you, you can see that my style changed on this because in my eyes, Superman is more of a light and bright character as opposed to Batman, which is dark and moody. So I wanted to give this almost an animation type feel where I would ink the characters and leave the backgrounds in pencil thinking that the backgrounds would, would, you know, sit in the, in, in the background a little bit more and, and better. Um, and I didn't put any blacks on the characters. It's all linear work. Again, thinking, uh, you know, I'll, I'll leave more, you know, leave it more open for color that, that these stories I felt should be, you know, lighter and brighter. So that's, that's the style difference. And, and in this, this particular page, um, I mean, I, I started out in the business as a letterer, mm -hmm. um, when I was like 12 or 13. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, they let me put sound effects in because, you know, because I can handle it. Um, and it, you know, I use it as part of the story, you know, and storytelling, you know, and those in panels two and three, I'm um, leading the reader, um, you know, from one panel to the next using the, the, the sound effect, you know, and then again, it leads it down into the, the splash page with, you know, the thum leading into the splash. Exactly. I want, I want to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, Vincent Meyer, can you let me know? I know you wrote claim one, uh, which could have been a typo. I assume you probably meant claim two, but let us know. <clears throat> Otherwise, uh, I'm assuming Lee, you know, we're going to give it to Lee, but you did come in first, Vincent. And, I, and sometimes typos do happen when you're trying to make a claim on one of these. So just confirm it in the chat. And uh, Rex Kramer channel, uh, wanting to know where the preview email is. Um, the uh, you can, there's actually a link in the description of the show on YouTube. So if you just look below it, click on that, you'll be able to preview all 20 lots that we have today. <clears throat> all right, two, sorry for the mistake. Okay, well, that, that answers that. So Vincent did pick that one up. Thank you, Lee, as well, for your interested uh, interest in it. We do have another uh, page from this, uh, this issue as well coming up. So uh, Vincent Meyer, I'm going to highlight that one as uh, the person who's claimed the slot. Thank you so much. Now, <clears throat> Gosh, I need a drink of water here. But looking at the artwork, the one thing I was going to mention or that I wanted to ask you about, oh, I've got, well, look, oh, I got oh. two sitting here, oh. <laughs> um, is, is is the choice on doing pencils. Because, yeah. you know, this is kind of uh, in in a period where that was kind of be, being experimented with a lot. And mm -hmm. I see you don't continue to do it today. So was it just a phase where you were, you know, you're trying to experiment and see how the colorist would handle pencil backgrounds uh, or elements in a page like that? And you moved away from it. It's not something you would do today. Um, no, I would do it today. Okay. Um, Dave Stewart, I, I believe it was Dave Stewart that colored and colored this, and, and he's you know he's one of the top you know five guys that are coloring today. Um, what I do in in a page, how I draw, and it, it really does depend on. It also depends on who's coloring it, um, because I'll take more chances with my art and leave more open for the colorist if I know somebody's there that that will catch me. <laughs> you know, in, in, instead of the latter. Um, so, you know, your question with doing the backgrounds in pencil, I, I didn't really know it was a thing that, that people were doing. I just thought, well, this, this might work and, and I'll give it a try. Cause I do, you know, I, I love experimenting and, and if you can see the cover that, that, uh, you know, the bizarro cover that I did on cardboard, you know, um, monochromatic, it's fun. I thought, well, you know, this this might be kind of cool for the you know the, the Superman covers the action covers, so it, it really is you know I like I said before I get bored easily and I like trying different things and and this is really just a you know a, another thing but it was again story derivative. Very good and uh, 
just looking at a couple of questions here. You know, we, I, I like the idea of the automatic, e, you know, preview emails. We'll probably do more of that. And the 20 pages that we're showing are not incremental as far as prices go. They're um, they're sort of more alphabetical or as they were ordered to, uh, when uh, when I got the spreadsheet from from Adam. So uh, you know, prices are kind of you know, we've got a high price piece uh, around uh, the middle of the show and one at the end. So so yeah, there's no no order to uh, to our to that. So we'll go ahead and show lot three because this is another page from this book, and uh, lot three is priced at seven hundred fifty dollars. It's page seventeen from the same story, and you know, like you mentioned, you got to work with uh, you know Jeff Johns and Richard Donner, you know, on this storyline. Added pressure when you're working with with writers that have that kind of clout, or you know, mm -hmm. no, no, no. <laughs> I, 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 I did I, shake I, his head when I, I, I asked. So <laughs> I, I, if I thought about like the visibility of the books I'm doing, you know, the, the notoriety of the people I'm working with, it would be more difficult for me to do the job. So, so I kind of, you know, I, I focus on the job and concentrate on that and, and, you know, do the best I can. And it, if I really thought about what I was doing, um, it, it would make it more difficult. Well, that makes sense. I mean, you don't want to put any added pressure on yourself. No. And I mean, and the thing is, you're working with them because they want to work with you too. In many cases, so you, you should you should feel completely comfortable and confident that uh, you, you can. I guess so. You know, some I don't I don't think in in those terms. I, yeah. You know, I don't really think in those terms. Well, you've been at it for a long time. I guess. Yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to psychoanalyze it for you right now. <laughs> I don't. You know, I, I I feel very fortunate that that you know. The, the, with the jobs that I get. Well, congrats to uh, Gustavo Sanchez for that one. I know there was a few other people interested in it as well, but uh, Gustavo's picked that up. Um, you know, quick question before we move on to the next one, uh, you know, or make it a quick answer is okay. uh, who's an artist you'd like to collaborate with? An artist. And that's from Anker. An artist. Yeah. Well, I've collaborated with uh, <laughs> Simon Bisley way back when I did a, a Hulk cover. I collaborated with Greg Hildebrandt. Um, you know, inkers, you know, a lot of those guys, you know, are, are you know, awesome artists in, in their own right. Mm -hmm. uh, collaborating with another artist, I've collaborated with my dad, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, right. Andy, I collaborated with. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> See, you don't have one. Huh? That's okay. I, well, I mean, Bill St. Kevich, I would love to, you know, jot something down on a piece of paper and see what he would do with it. Right. Be, that would be really awesome. You know, yeah. um, there are graphic designers that I would I would love to collaborate with and see what they come up with. Um, so, well, St. Kevich is a good one, right? Because he's somebody who's, I mean, he's prolific doing his, you know, completely rendered pages, but he's inked so many people too. Yeah. And I, I agree. You know, it's very interesting to see his approach when he's handling like a Dennis Cowan or, you know, you know, how, how much of, of his work comes through or his style comes through because mm -hmm. there are, you know, the classic guys like, like a Joe Sinnott who just accentuated everybody's stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. Bill, Bill's style still comes through, but it doesn't, at least typically in the pieces I've seen, doesn't like over render it. So you can't see the original artist in front right. under it, but, it'd right. be, but it, yeah, for you, I mean, that would be a, a cool collaboration, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, anything <laughs> it, it may, you know, it may or may not, you know, differ from what you have in mind. But at least you know it's going to look awesome, <laughs> you know. Exactly. Whatever, whatever happens, yeah. you know. Uh, well, everybody's giving that the thumbs up too. I think they've been love to cool. see something like that in the future too. Uh, now, this next piece, it, we've got. It's basically two. We're gonna. I think it's two pieces of art. One is because it has like a, a you had a patch over one of the characters, so it, it, you had uh, that going for it. So um, I'll go ahead and show this one because the, 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 we're moving back to Marvel, everybody. So the Marvel fans mm -hmm. should be, uh, be happy about that. So this is lot four. It's, uh, from, uh, Avengers, the, you know, the, the 2018 series It's from issue 10 page mm -hmm. 47, technically the Avengers uh, 70th issue. You've got, uh, celestials in this one over there on the, on the left. Mm -hmm. And, uh, what I wanted to show was that, uh, there's also this extra, uh, patch panel of wasp and then the pencil prelim I, that's that's the other piece i forgot about so it's really three pieces that right. you're going to get with this one for, for uh 750 dollars right. and is it this is a case where the costume or character i made a mistake you made a mistake <laughs> you know, okay. I, put, I put the wrong i put the wasp in in the wrong uh costume um and you know there was a, a separate piece of paper for for the patch that, that i did um but but interesting thing about this story 
Um, I, I think this was, you know, uh, I forget how many pages all together was. Maybe, you know, 10 pages, we'll say. But it, it came mid-story. And and uh, the idea was this this page, it goes from a horizontal format to a vertical format. And they and the lettering actually follows that, you know, that 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 format, so, which helps you, you know, the reader uh, uh, to see that, oh, I got to turn the page from, you know, from horizontal to, to I, I want the transition to be smooth, which is, right. which is why I did it this way. At the beginning of the story, they have to turn it vertical. At the end of the story, they have to turn it back to horizontal. Um, so, the, you know, I felt that, the, you know, that it was important for the lettering to follow that and, and, and help with the transition. And again, this was story derivative. I forget. Let me see my notes. Uh, 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 Wolverine loses his hat. Wolverine is in that first panel. Uh, that's, you know, that's his hat in the foreground, but he's, you know, I think before this, there was like a two page splash or something with, with Wolverine. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Loki and Wasp, you know, Wasp obviously in there, but Loki's in there also. All right. Well, I think this one's still going to be available. We'll show it again in the recap. This is, uh, again, this is three pieces of art, the original page on 11 by 17, and then the patch panel and the prelim as well. And the prelims were on 11 by 17 as well, right? It is. It's just on copy paper. Copy paper. Yeah. Okay. Got yeah. it. All right. Well, that one is uh, still available. And, and again, I'm seeing, a, as far as the previews go, everybody, just, you know, this was the first show where I showed everything in a preview email. And clearly, it seems like that's what everybody wants. I was, I just usually didn't show it all because I figured it was a good uh, PR to not show everything. And mm -hmm. then people coming, you, you know, because if you, if, you, if you saw everything and you didn't see anything you liked, see you, later. you might not come <laughs> show up at all. So uh, we were taking, I, to me, I yeah. thought we were taking a big risk. Like yeah, yeah. if you're an art buyer yeah. and I show you everything and you don't want anything, yeah. you might not bother yeah. to tune in. So, yeah. but I get it. And um, so yeah, I see that big number just going down and down. So, you know, it only went down five, <laughs> it's still at 230, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we, we understand. So uh, I'm going to do, I'll, I'll do it the next time I've got a show. We're a work in progress. Yes, right? exactly. I've been That's at right. this for three years and I'm yeah. still learning. Yeah um let's see here what was uh yeah i can't look at the questions i'm going to focus on the sales so we can get through it so lot four is still out there uh everybody's agreeing that previews are the best way to go all right so uh next piece lot five priced at one thousand dollars this is a dps from monsters unleashed the uh 2017 series uh, this is issue five pages 18 and 19 and I, I i did not read this version of monsters unleashed so uh you know is this did you did you work on uh, several issues to Monsters Unleashed, is, or is this a was this? Like, I, I don't remember. You don't remember. <laughs> this was this was. I mean, okay. So I, I what happened in in this particular page? Uh, this is this is Keiju, um, a little boy character. Uh, this is towards the end of the, end of this story. Um, the first panel is uh, is a conglomeration of. of more you know monsters that came together to form the this this one big monster but this page i really liked you know i, I like the the blacks that, that i laid out i like the action you know that second panel um you know i i just think it worked out really well and, and you know i felt a lot of freedom trying to you know with taking chances with the art in in this story because um I don't want to say nobody was going to, nobody would see it, but you, know, right. you didn't read it. So, um, so I, I, you know, but, but, but I do like how these came out. And so it was the, uh, I mean, the interest in doing a title like this versus doing something, you know, like the Avengers or Wolverine, was it just to kind of just a change of pace for you or was it just, you had the time it was a, like a fill in job. I mean, I have no idea. I mean, like for, for you tackling a job like Monsters Unleashed mm -hmm. versus doing it something that might have been more high profile that I might have read. Mm -hmm. Okay, now um, to, to to take a step back, I've been at Marvel for a long, long time. I am under contract. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an employee of Marvel. Uh, not, you know, I, they always ask me. They said, "Do you want to do this? This this could be come on a, up next." And it, it it was a great job, and it, you know continues. You know, I, I was happy I took it on. Um, but, you know, a lot of, you know, what am I trying to say? This is the one that came down the pike. So I, you know, so I did it. Yeah. You know, that's pretty much how it happened. Okay. You know, the next one may have been more high profile. 
You know, I don't really look at the jobs that I do. Is this one high profile or is this one not high profile? You know, it, it's really, you know, the, the story that's important. And, and uh, you know, and that's the same with this one. Okay. Well, I mean, I never, you know, I've never talked to an artist about, you know, how they're, how they pick their jobs. Well, pick their jobs or how they're contractually, you know, you're, you're an employee of Marvel, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. I've never heard anybody say something to me quite like that before, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because I, I always hear stories like, well, the writer wanted me on the job or, you know, those sorts of things. And so I thought it was maybe a little bit more fluid than that in, mm -hmm. in sort of uh, choosing things. But I guess if you have an opening in your schedule and there's things that need to be done. Right. I'll yeah. do it. Yeah. Right. Okay. right. I mean, it benefits me and it benefits Marvel. You know, they get me on a project that, you know, I, I may not have done if, uh, you know, if I was completely freelance and somebody was pulling at me to do something over here. Right. Um, but this this one, uh, you know, this is the one I that I, I wanted to do. OK. Uh, well, next up, lot six. This is uh, one of the big ones of the day, I believe. So we'll take a look at that one. This is the uh, the cover from Origin Two, the 2013 series. This is the cover to issue three. All pencil, priced at seventy five hundred dollars. You know, and this is when we were looking at the Superman piece. That's when I was thinking. You know, this is kind of coming out of that era where I remember when Origin came out. The whole like the pencils only effect with the way the coloring was laid down. It made it feel so painterly. Mm -hmm. And I, I was, you know, I bought the issues just because I loved the effect. It was just something so so yep. new, right? You know, and and this, you know, this work and your work on these uh, on these books was just amazing. And, and the coloring complemented the pencil work so much. Mm -hmm. Well, Frank Martin colored these, and and that's exactly the idea because Origin One, which which Andy drew, that was very painterly. I think Richard Eisenhoff uh, um, did digital coloring over Andy's pencils. So we wanted this to be in line with what was done before, mm -hmm. um, which is why all the covers were were you know for me fully tonal illustrations, um, and I believe the insides, uh, the interiors were. Uh, I, I forget if they were ink or, or pencil. I have a feeling that they were ink. I think they were ink. Or maybe a combination of, of like an outline ink with, with tonal. But sort I, of I like forget. that, the Superman page? where Yeah, yeah. similar to that, but yeah. But, but I, I'd have to see it. Well, congrats to Noel for picking this one up. It's a, it's a beauty. And awesome. I got to see it before the show started. It's, uh, it, it is gorgeous. And uh, Joshua mentions that I remember Adam drawing this at the Cubert's. Oh, you did! Clients. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the, the the great thing about the school, you know, I would bring my work in and I would work on it as you know in, in front of the class. If nobody's you know asking questions or, or wanting me to go over their work, I'd, I'd have my work there and, and and I would be working on that. And it was great. Those guys would would give me you know feedback on it or you know, or whatever, because, mm -hmm. you know, as an artist, I, I don't think you should ever be, you know, above criticism, you know, because, it, you know, you get, you know, you can get really close to the work and, and not see the mistakes because you work on it for a while. Um, and, and, you know, you could choose to either listen to them or not or, mm -hmm. or whatever, but, you know, getting feedback, I, I think is, is an important part of, of what we do. Right. That's uh you figure, Back in the 60s, 70s, into the early 80s, you know, Marvel had the bullpen. So there were a lot of times you were around other artists who could give you uh, criticisms or just thoughtful suggestions here and mm -hmm. there if you wanted it. Uh, but today, in the you know, since the mid 90s onward, so many artists are working at home. You're kind of in a little bubble. Mm -hmm. You don't really get to have a, another person come in and critique your work outside right. of a spouse or something. Right. So uh, yeah, I mean, I think you, that was a great thing being able to do work like that at the school where mm -hmm. the students could see you doing it. And yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, and I was getting something done. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but these days it's a lot easier with social media. You pop it up. You get oh, comments or, or your friends or. You know, you share on DeviantArt or, or wherever you share it, you know, you, you get feedback, but you really have to kind of filter through, um, you know, constructive criticism and just, you know, criticism for the sake of criticizing. Sure. Uh, answer to uh, Rex's question here. Sometimes you you could be a little bit behind us. I can tell you, you know, we're about five seconds into the future for everybody who's watching the show. So uh, what I would suggest to you, Rex, is if uh, you want to be as close to real time as possible. There, if you're you're on YouTube, there is a little uh, button or text link in the lower left hand corner that says live. You can click that and that should move you as close to live as you can possibly get. Or even a simpler way is just refresh the browser 
and that will put you as close to live as you can possibly get. Because sometimes when you join a stream midway, it might put you 10 seconds behind us, uh, you know, rather than being right up at the uh, the closest moment you can to to be in these things. So I'll get, I'm giving everybody that chance to hit refresh on your browser before I show the next one. Phil, I'm having a good time. This is this is a lot of fun. I'm glad. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, I, <laughs> trust me, I, I'm glad we're sharing this together because usually, you know, being alone, I'm I'm just sitting here biting my fingernails, yeah, worrying yeah. about how everybody you know perceives these shows. But again, it's great. I'm, great. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying. Uh, so we'll go ahead and show lot number seven now. And uh, this is a pencil only piece. This one is uh, from, uh, let's see, X-Men Schism or, uh, you know, from 2011 the series. Is, this is issue five, page 14. It's on 11 by 17, priced at 750. And uh, I hate to say it, this is one that I didn't read either. So uh, kick me for that one. But, but you know, pencil only on this one, you know, I look at the the finished piece. I mean, it looks like it was inked. Were the inks yeah. all done digitally? Well, it, see, okay. Now you, you'll you'll see all these pages, even just a, a smattering of twenty pages. They're all done differently, right? Okay. So I, I think the job or two before this, I had, I had, uh, um, we we had to get it done, and uh, another artist came in and leveled my pencils to black. It wasn't oh. digitally inked, but it was leveled to black, and and that gave me the idea. Well. If I pencil really tight, I can level it to black mm -hmm. and and make changes as you know as I go or or, or whatnot. Um, so this one was all penciled. It's not really digitally inked. It's like digitally leveled. Right. And then when when it was scanned in, um, I would you know I, I'd go back here or there with with some of the um, you know with actually digitally inking it. So that's why the pencils are are, are really tight and there was no inker involved on on this on this page it was uh so what you see the the pencils are are what was printed that's amazing see i've never uh i don't think i've ever heard that before you mm -hmm. know where you're leveling out the pencils to make them dark and right. then yeah that's but it works and it worked out it i mean really i think does. it worked out really really well i was happy with it and the colors I, I forget who colored that but um you know they, they did an outstanding job on on the coloring too well, there was a lot of interest in this piece. Jason uh, Ladwig picked it up. Uh, thank you, Gabe, Martin, right. Ari, Trevor, Marcus, uh, for your interest in this piece as well. There are 13 other lots coming up, but uh, yeah, this this was a really nice one and and, and cool. I, I mean, I never never knew that. I, and my impression was always that the, the you know the colorist was just making those tweaks and stuff. But so when you sent this in, you had you had already leveled up the blacks yeah. for them. Yeah, it looked like an ink page. Wow. Right. Right. Well, I'm learning a lot today, Adam. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so this next lot is comprised of four pages, and I've got four slides to show you on it. And uh, all of these, let me see. I want to make sure I'm on the size before we get into it. So these are, yeah, they're all on 11 by 17. So I'll just jump over to lot eight here. Uh, they're priced at $1,000 for all eight. It's consecutive pages. It's three through six from Infinity Wars, Soldier Supreme uh, from 2018, issue two. So this is page three, uh, and, and again, we talked about this one, this, you know, kind of the storytelling. If you follow from each of these, you'll notice that the four panel uh, layout there for each of these pages on the right progressively gets a little smaller, things are breaking the panel borders, and then as you get to page six here, everything's a little bit smaller, and, uh, you know, he's, he's completing his task. You know, reaching the light or, or whatnot that you know what's happening in there. I think we, I hadn't, I didn't read this one, and I think Adam, you said you weren't, you couldn't remember exactly either what what the objective in here was, but uh, but it's a really great uh, uh, set of pages in in the the way you've kind of rendered them and just kind of go. It's like f fading to black slowly as you go from a, these four uh, four pieces, right? Well, the the character itself is is Soldier Supreme, who is amalgamation between. Uh, um, uh, Doctor Strange and and Captain America, so it's it's you know the the storyline was such that you know the two characters came together, and uh, you know again you know it, the way I I handle the storytelling is is based on what's happening in the story. Um, so I you know so I, I forget what happened after this page, but you know 
uh, Doctor or, or Soldier Supreme is after this light for whatever reason. I, I really forget what what it was, but it becomes more and more confined. I wanted to draw the panels smaller and smaller. I wanted more and more black space, you know, to to feel um, to to make the 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 characters within the panels feel more confined. Mm -hmm. um, and the coloring really enhances these uh, these images. Yeah, well, it's a very painterly style on the on the colored pieces. I was glad you sent those along. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. One question I saw earlier, you know, from uh, Daniel was wanting to know if all the pieces are published. And yes, they are. Yeah. We always list which. Uh, you know, you can see on the slides that the white copy is going to list what issue and page numbers the uh, the artwork was from. And um, so, yeah, everything we we're showing today is published. So. Uh, it, these, uh, these four pages will be out there uh, in a recap, what we'll show you after the fact. Um, and Ronald Shepard, you asked if uh, I got your claim for Lot 5. Yes, I did. You uh, you did get Lot 5. Thank you so much. Oh, I hit the wrong one there. So, all right. So, lots of, uh, Lot 8 will still be out there. We'll look at that a little bit later. And then somebody had asked if there was going to be any Spidey pages. And we actually do have two pages uh, from two different Spider-Man titles here. So I'm going to show the first one here. This is lot number nine. Uh, there's a second slide for this as well that has the prelim on it. Lot number nine is priced at $1,200. It's from Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man from the 2017 series. This is from issue two, page 12. A great half splash of Spidey in action there. This is on 11 by 17 as, uh, as noted on the slide as well. And I can show you the second slide to that, which shows you the the prelim that goes to this. Now, do you do you do all your prelims in pencil, or do you do you do them in uh, digital at, at times, or a mix of both? Uh, really, a mix of both. This one was done in in all pencil. Okay. And and you could see again, uh, you know, the, the figure is inked. Uh, the background I did in wash to kind of separate, the, you know, foreground from background. Um, and uh, you know, this is I think this is Spider Man and uh, um, the Human Torch, uh, Johnny Storm in it well congratulations to michael lovitz for picking this one up we had a lot of people interested in this one as well uh josh flanders gabe carino dustin whitney matt i mean thank you all for your interest in this we have one other wow there's a lot more people who are interested in this one uh and, and this is something that you know many of, I, we have so many new people in the chat today i wanted to mention that when you're posting your chat it doesn't always show it to you in the same way we see it here in the studio in the studio the the, the chat is time stamped and we see it in the order properly but youtube likes to stick your chat immediately in there when you hit enter on it and even if you're not uh it, it, it just it won't look right like josh who came in milliseconds after michael probably sees his claim above michael's but uh, to everybody else, they'll see it in the proper manner. But anybody who's claiming will see it in a different uh, different way. So it's just a quirk of uh, how claims in a chat format work. But we do see it the right way here in the studio. Uh, so we'll go ahead and show lot number 10. Now, from, this is a Spider-Man page as well. And it is from a, a different, or, or no, it is, is it from the same one? Yeah, it, it is. is. Oh, it is yeah, from the same one. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, but both, both written by uh, Chip Zdarsky. Got so, it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this one's priced at eight hundred dollars, and got J. Jonah Jameson in there as well, looking rather unhappy or disheveled in some manner. Uh, and I even like the, the the coloring on this one's really really nice as well. You've gotten to work with a lot of great colors. Oh yeah, yeah. I, like I said, I, I, I've been very very fortunate. And then I think that's Teresa Parker in the background also, with the wings. Very nicely done. And Gabe Carino he got in first on this one, on lot number 10. So, uh, and again, thank you for the interest from so many other people as well. Uh, what ID should I use with Zell? Ronald Shepard, shoot me an email and I will uh, I, I will get you that information as soon as the show is over as far as making the payments. Bill at ComicArtFans.com is the email address to uh, email after the show is done. But I, yeah, get, get in touch with me that way and I will let you know. Well, you are the multitask king. <laughs> now, you're, now you're seeing. I don't, now you're starting, you're seeing, I don't know how you do it. Uh, oh it's only God. because I've done these for a couple of years. But it, it, trust me, I, I, I'm as nervous as can be right I want now. to see you do this blindfolded. Uh, well, see, now that I couldn't do because I have to read the chat. 
Um, all right. Well, moving right along, we're halfway through this thing right now. So we'll go to lot number 11 now. And, uh, and I, I'm not even sure what, what's in lot number 11, but so let's see lot number 11. Oh yeah. This is uh, priced at $2,500. This is a vintage page from 1992 ghost rider blaze spirits of vengeance. You got venom on here. You got Johnny storm. Uh, you know, we've got a 30 year old page here. You know, and this, this is, I, I, you know, I didn't know what to expect that you were going to bring, but I was so happy to see something that was so early in your career. And this mm -hmm. is, this is on 13 by 19 as well, everybody. So it's a little bit right. oversized. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I just, I, yeah, I love this period of work. I mean, I, I think a few other people on Facebook, when they saw this piece posted, they, they were like, man, you know, the artwork that was done in that period is just so different from artwork we see today. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, this was from, a, you know, a, an early 90s, late 80s period, just by right. the, the way the page is designed, the way the inks are laid down. Mm -hmm. uh, just this is just awesome. And I, I believe Bill Reinhold uh, inked this one. Oh, sweet. And, and also the lettering is on it. I mean, that, that's, you know, it, it, OK, so it's pasted on. OK, I would prefer to have the lettering right on right on the board because um, the, there's that much less drawing you have to do. Right. If it's on the board and I would, you know, I would prefer to, to you know, to put the lettering in myself or let or letter it myself even. Well, that's but, cool that uh, Bill Reinhold did this. He and I were just yeah. emailing. I'm gonna. I don't think I'm going to be doing art sale with him, but I want to do an interview with him. Yeah, he, yeah. He agreed oh, to Bill's do it. Bill's great. Bill's great. I mean, yeah, I love you know Bill's work. I mean, I, I always think of him from like Justice Machine days and those yeah. sorts of things. I mean, I, I've always loved his work. I've seen him at shows. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. he's a guy. He was a journeyman back in the day. He was just yeah. really good. I mean, yeah. so uh, very cool. I should have noted that on there. What What made him so good? Is that he can draw really well, mm -hmm. so he can interpret the pencils, and and he's not a, a slave to what I put down. He he, you know, the job of an anchor, the job of a colorist, the job, my job, you know, when I when I look at a script is is to take it up a step to to make it better than it was, and and I think Bill definitely did that. All right, well, I wanted to note that Maki Poo Poo did get this one. We had a few other people interested, Brian, Trevor, uh, and several others, but uh, Maki Poo Poo was first on that one. So thank you for that, and I. Uh, We'll do this one as a quick question in between because I know that uh, it's been asked a couple times by by Mick. Wanted to know, uh, you know, if you have any art pieces today from your father. Uh, oh, of course. I was going to say I'm I'm, yeah. pr I'm pretty sure you have have a lot of his work. I, I do. imagine. Yeah, I do as well. You should. Yeah. Um, that's uh, you know, and but you probably well we've talked about. It. Is, is there anything that your dad's worked on that you you don't have? I mean, because I know you probably have a lot of different things from different periods of his uh, Well, he's career. done so much. There's a ton there. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So, right. Yeah, yeah. You can't have a, yeah. a representative piece yeah. from every I mean, period. Very, every period. very prolific. Well, there you have it. And uh, wait, Maki Poo Poo says I hit claim by mistake. Well, that's okay, Maki Poo Poo, because there were, so, there were several people after you that uh, were interested in that. So we'll just go ahead and give it to Brian McCall. And there's no uh, no harm, no foul, Maki Poo Poo. <laughs> I, I, it, I, Anyway, but it happens. We know it because a lot of people will type the claim in the in the uh, window. In the chat Several people yeah. already have claim twelve already typed in and ready yeah, yeah. to go. Yeah. They're they're getting mad because they can't comment on things we're talking about because they're waiting to hit enter. So it does happen. But uh, Brian McCall, uh, you are. This must be stressful for you. No, for well, I'm not. I'm not stressed at all. But those, you know, <laughs> like no. Well, right. I mean, this is it, this isn't well, but it's like uh, sniping at an auction or yeah, something, yeah. right? At the end of the day, yeah. I mean, you, know, yeah. you can you can sweat it out at a heritage auction yeah. as well. Yeah, um, that's true. But uh, but we're, they are at the uh, mercy of technology when we're doing this. So right. uh, we appreciate everybody who's hanging with us uh, through all these. And yeah, it's, thank you guys very very much. I, you know, I haven't chimed in because you know because Bill's doing his thing, and and, that, and that's you know, but thank you guys very very much. All right. Well, Brian, uh, wait. <laughs> Brian says he did the same. How can two people do? This? All right, but I but I believe you guys. Now I have to gr scroll over here. Trevor, Trevor Henson, did you do it on purpose, uh, with intent? I should say, Trevor Henson, are you are you in the uh, chat? Let us know, because there's no way it wasn't going to get claimed. Uh, but uh, just just confirm it for me, Trevor. I'll scratch out. I've scratched out Maki Poo Poo. I've scratched out Brian McCall, and I'm. Uh, Writing in uh, Trevor Henson right now, unless Trevor's going to no, say. No, I think I just saw. I didn't mean to claim if it comes to me. Oh, it did. How? Oh, Mike. Well, then there it is still out there. 
Uh, well, Joseph Rivera is saying, I'll take it if they don't want it. I mean, were, was there anyone else that uh, did not? Let me just make sure that we didn't see another claim pop in here after uh, after Michael. So let me see. Sorry, I got to <laughs> scroll through. So we had we had Brian and then Trevor and then no one else. So, uh, okay, well, where was that? Now I got to get all the way down there, right down there. Uh, Joseph Rivera is going to take it. So thank you, Joseph. We, we sincerely appreciate Oh, look at Joseph's color for his J. Looks really, really nice with my shirt there. Color coordinating. I love it. All right. Joseph Rivera. I mean, there was no way that page was not going to get claimed. So see, now you're starting to sweat a little bit, aren't you? I am. I am. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Joseph. Um, and remember, everybody, once the, the show's over, you're going to be emailing Bill at ComicArtFans.com to set up payment and get me your uh, contact information. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, one and all. All right, so we'll keep this rolling here. We're going on to the next lot, and uh, let's see here. What do we got here? So this is a change of pace a little bit. This is from Ultimate Fantastic Four. It's lot number 12, priced at $800 on 11 by 17. It's from issue three. It's page nine. It's got the thing all over it. I mean, how often did you draw the thing before Ultimate Fantastic Four? Um, I, I don't think I drew them at all. I, I don't think I ever drew the Fantastic Four before this, and and this page I, I just li I like the way it came out again, leading the reader's eye from panel to panel with the sound effects. Um, I, I for I, you know story wise I don't remember what what's exactly happening, but you know I I think thing landed in the first panel. Um, the guys are running away, you know steps here, boom steps there. The you know the what is that over on the right there? Um, people or something, you know, go get tossed, and then the um, fire hydrant explodes, and Chuck is 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 coming down on him. So, no, it's a great it, piece, and I, yeah, I love the last panel, the, the detail, and the way you, we talk about this a lot. And I and I have to say, I'm sorry to say that uh, the number one thing fan out there, Chris Snork, he came in second on this piece. Jason Ladwig did uh, did come in first on it, but. But uh, Chris Nork is is somebody I do the calf updates every Thursday with. We talk about art all the time, and, and he features usually a piece of thing art every time. But the thing he always mentions about the character is that he loves the fact that every artist kind of has their own take on how to, how to do the brow or how they're going to draw the rocks. And it's so, mm -hmm. something that uh, – so when you were drawing drawing a thing, I mean, did you look – for inspiration or did you just of kind course. of yeah. yeah so which yeah. which artists work on the thing did you kind of draw from the oh, most? who did i look at I, I forget i mean i forget who i was looking at um but danny mickey inked this so you see the in the upper right hand corner yeah this crime lab studio sticker um and he brings another level of of finish to any art that he touches which is you know which is really really great and i love danny's work and i love working with him you know who I was probably looking at? I bet you I was looking at Art Adams because I always look at his stuff. When I did the Hulk, I, I had his all his renditions of the Hulk in front of me. He did um, not, not not to jump the subject too much, mm -hmm. but um, Art Adams did turnaround drawings. I don't know what it was for. Maybe it was for a toy, or, but of all the incar uh, incarnations of the Hulk, okay. you know, Joe Fix at Hulk, you know, all of them. And I I I think Dana Moore said I think he sent me copies of it um and i had xeroxes of of it and i i had that plastered all in my room when i was drawing the hulk that may, well that makes a lot of sense i mean yeah. art adams is a good person to kind of look to for yeah uh, yeah well uh so thank you jason for picking this one up sorry chris you know maybe in another show there'll be another thing image uh that you might have an opportunity to pick up but uh we appreciate jason for that one and then where was the i saw a question i had it highlighted and i managed to miss it um Oh, oh, Vernon wanted to know how do we how can we ask about pieces not featured? You can't really ask about any pieces directly, Vernon. But you know, after the show, you're more than welcome to email Bill at ComicArtFans.com and uh, you know talk about which titles and characters you might like to see in future shows. And I'll always pass those along to Adam. He'll make a decision whether or not he wants to bring anything that, like that's that. That's a great way to do it. But, that's a great way. But to do it. you know, we'd be happy to you know field those kind of requests. And you know, you never know. It may it may influence Adam's decision making. Well, you know, I I have actually. A lot of, of my work. I, I think out of you know everything that that I've done, um, I would say at least eighty percent of of the work that I produced, I still have. Eighty percent—that's a lot of artwork a, over thirty it's, years. It's gotten to be a pain in the ass. Oh my gosh! Like, you keep yeah. having to buy a new flat file every three or four years, right? <laughs> it, it's or a lot. something. Like I said, I'm I'm 
focused on on working you know uh, yeah no i get it that that's that's great and you know and the cool thing is is you know you're in a day and age where the artwork stays with you you're not shipping it into anybody to scan right. and send them back to you right so it really does pile up and mm -hmm. it's it's no and wonder I'm, and i'm inking i've been inking my own stuff for the last 15 or so years so you know so i do keep a lot of it uh how much are the big wolverine well the, well they're not for sale uh, uh, correct. Uh, he was question was how much are the big wolverine covers like the one oh, you showed uh, us at the start yeah. probably yeah they're, well they're not for sale they're going they're going to be in a few museum uh gallery uh things but you know sometime in the future you never know the uh a piece of they table. will eventually because you know i you can't i, I shouldn't hold on to this stuff forever well you know it's a works, mistake works that size <laughs> you, know? you you know i don't know what you're going to put them in yeah. so you you yeah well, i do have big i have big flat files for okay, those. okay yeah. well that's good yeah well so then yeah you might not see some for a while but uh but eventually they'll, 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 they'll definitely surface <laughs> oh man and ash keeps critiquing my my wardrobe he was doing that last night too <laughs> That's okay. What's I, wrong with your wardrobe? I, I like this shirt. I had a ratty shirt on last night. Uh, oh, you know, like my. It's cool. It, well, this one. That's this much is, cooler than mine. Mine's this, like. This was know. a recent crowdfunded project by my friend George Hodge. He uh -huh. did a like a seven-inch vinyl with um, uh, Matthew Allison and Aaron Connolly. Uh -huh. Aaron lives in Lakeland. You know, both artists, and uh, so I just got a kind of a. I supported it, but only yeah. for like the stickers. And he sent me everything, including a t shirt. So that's a nice t shirt. Yeah, yeah. I like it too. I, like it. I haven't even washed it yet. I hope it wasn't pre worn by, some, by by George before he sent it to me. Maybe it'll bring you a lot. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see with the rest of the show. What do we got? We got uh, eight more pieces to look at. So, lot, lot 13. I don't know if it's going to be a lucky number or not, but it is from a title I think a lot of X Men fans really appreciated. So, lot 13 is priced at $700. It's from Ultimate X Men, the 2000 one series it's from issue 16 this is page 14 it's on 11 by 17 uh but but the image area is smaller the image area does look a little smaller as well i think it's 8 by 12. oh okay yeah, yeah that I, so i draw large i draw small all right i'm gonna look at that one because i don't think i looked at that page in the portfolio yeah oh yeah okay well i'll even take it out so yeah, we, can, yeah. we can show it for people yeah to get a good look at how that's yeah. done but it's not that much. And, and, you know, a lot of artists do that. I mean, Mike Allred works on smaller scale. Oh, does he? Yeah. Yeah. Even smaller than this. His are, his are actually closer to the printed size. Um, wow. I've got some uh, X wow. Factor pages of his. Well, I know Amanda Connor, a good friend of ours, and, and you know, with Jimmy. But Amanda draws, like, her thumbnails. I would say, like, three by five. But there's so much detail in, in those little thumbnails. It, it's amazing. And, and if you're wondering, the reason I drew this smaller is I was hoping it would go quicker if I draw it smaller. <laughs> and <laughs> what did you find, it, Adam? It, it, it found, I, I found that I would just put more detail. <laughs> you know, I could draw big, I can draw right. small, you know, but there's still the same amount of work and detail and no, it didn't go faster. Oh man, well here, I'm gonna, I've got it in hand. So, uh, well, thank you to uh, ESSP002 for claiming it right ahead of uh, Jesse Morgan. And here, I'll hide the slide, and uh, you can kind of see how it's done. Uh, I wish I had uh, some other pages that, you know, from a few other artists that work on this format. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's it's just a little bit undersized by, like you said, maybe maybe about 80% smaller than normal. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it prints at 87. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, there's, it looks like you, I, I, I would have thought you put as much time into this piece as, as any of the larger yeah. ones, too. Yeah. And, again, working with Danny Mickey, I mean, he works super, super tight. Right. So I, I I knew there you know there wouldn't be an issue with uh, with the amount of detail that's in there. Wow, well, beautiful piece and congrats to yeah, ECS nice uh, on that one. Um, all right, sorry about the delay killing you, Joshua. You I mean again? You can hit refresh. It shouldn't be that far behind. At the end of the day, once you hit refresh, you're going to be about three or four to five seconds behind us in the studio, but you should be pretty even with everybody else who's watching the chat. Can I look at that comment that's just above? Uh, yeah, this was yeah. from Anthony. Yeah. So I want to say thanks for all the growth. Uh, you're welcome, Anthony. I, I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, sometimes I get these, you know, like people that are that are older, you know, 40 years old and said, oh, I grew up on your comics. You know, I, I, I'm complimented, but man, I, it, it does make me feel old. Well, it's <laughs> true. I mean, when, yeah, the word grew up on your yeah, comics. Yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. you probably heard people say that to your father a yeah. lot when you would go out to yeah. shows. And yeah. How did your dad take it? I mean, uh, you, you can't take it. Uh, you know, you're only appreciative. 
Yeah. But but when I see a forty year old and he says I was a kid when I started reading, I was like, oh geez, that, that makes you feel I old. Don't, that makes me because I don't feel old, but that makes me feel old. Yeah. Right, right. No, I get you. Yeah. Um. Well, hey, if, if, that's if, life. That's life. It's, that's what you get for being in the business yeah. for you know thirty years. Yeah. Uh. All right. So where are we at now? Let's go to lot fourteen, and uh, this is a uh, Ultimate X Men page from issue thirty three. It's page eight, uh, eleven by seventeen. Same format, a little bit smaller. Uh, in the drawing, this one's priced at five hundred dollars. You got Professor X, and that's Magneto, right? So right, right. He's in some kind of prison or, or something. Um, and the the coloring. I mean, this is where it was, you know, fairly open for color. I think the cl the coloring uh, really works and, and enhances the image. So he's in a prison. At first, when I looked at this, I thought it was maybe in the danger room, but it's not. Well, very nicely done. And Marty Weber has uh, picked up this one. Thank you, Marty. We appreciate it. And uh, we got 150 likes. Yeah, everybody should be hitting that thumbs up at the bottom of the screen. If you're watching the show, let us know that uh, you're enjoying it because I'm, I'm having a good time. I am too. I, I hope everybody in the chat is. Adam is. Oh. You know, and then what's interesting about like Ultimate X-Men, Ultimate Fantastic Four, this is, you know, I, I, I guess, you know, if, if, if we were to categorize these pieces, you know, these aren't 90s pieces, they're 2000 pieces. Mm -hmm. And from what I'm told, you know, I guess that's that's the next hot area yeah, yeah definitely so uh again so thank you marty for that one we're gonna we're gonna roll right into lot 15 here now uh this is uh this is a doozy this is you know and i hate to say this is well let me just go through it this is lot 15 it's priced at 3500 dollars. it's from weapon x from 1995 it's from issue two page four it's on 11 by 17. uh you know for me I wasn't reading comics in 1995. I missed the whole age of, of apocalypse thing as a huge X-Men fan. Mm -hmm. And I, I started buying comics again in 96, 97. So I had to go back and buy all these issues and familiarize myself with what the hell happened in the six year period from when I was in college to when I finally had money enough to buy comics again. And th these were so influential, you know, the stories, mm -hmm. the art, I mean, it, it had been a lot of fun working, you know, on these books in general during that time period it didn't feel <laughs> okay that, it was okay. i mean don't don't get me wrong it was fun it was it was you know it, it was crazy um but when you're living it and doing it it's it's your job you know and when age of apocalypse happened you know what do you mean we're changing all the characters we gotta design this and design that and 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 you know, and I still got it. I still have the same amount of time that I had to get these done. So it, it, it's a lot of work. But looking back on it, we, it was a really, you know, um, special time in, in comics. The 90s were special. You know, it was, it was more like the Wild West. You know, you could do, you know, splashy. You could do storytelling. You know, it, it would sell. You know, those things were, you know, some of those comics were, you know, selling in the millions. Oh, yeah. Which, which was crazy. Um, but, you know, um, I designed the Weapon X Carrot, you know, Wolverine, this version of him. And there's a little story you could see in, in that panel that you have bigger where you see the stump of, a, of yes. his hand. Um, but in the story, you know, Bob Harris, he needed a uh, a design for Weapon X Wolverine. He needed it for a meeting that he was going to go into in, in like within half an hour. And this was when we would fax things back and forth. So I jotted something down really quick. And I said, ah, you know, at the last second, I'll just cut off his hand and put the, a stump on there. And I sent it in and I said, I'll never go with it, but who cares? You know, whatever happens, you know, we'll come back with, yeah. the, you know, comments. And and it went through. And they actually uh, um, wrote the story around, you know, because his claws eventually popped out through the stump. Yeah. You know, which, you know, I didn't think, you know, where it was claws. I just thought this was a cool, different, you know, way to handle the character, you know. And he still has his nose, as you can tell. So yes. I, I learned, you know, <laughs> don't, don't take his nose off. Right. Um, so that, that's, that's how that happened. Well, this one was picked up by Dave Kopecki. I did highlight that. Lots of interest in this piece, as uh, I think we all knew there would be. So congrats uh, to Dave on this one. Great. That's so a good page. It really is a very, very nice page. Um, and this was also the, the beginning of computer coloring. You know, you could see on Gene's face, you know, the, oh, the yeah. you know they took the black out. And although I kind of like the black, but, you know, the, the blue works uh, pretty well also. But, you know, and I remember towards the end of Age of Apocalypse, um, I think Steve Busolato probably colored these. He really started to get a handle on um, 
you know, on, on the tones and the rendering and, you know, because whenever a new technology comes out, the, the tendency is to overdo, you right. know, oh, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. But Steve, um, you know, controlled, controlled himself, you know, and I, and I'm also looking up on the, the top where Wolverine's head, he took the, the, uh, the, the, the tattoo on his forehead and made that red, which I think, you know, worked out pretty well. Yeah, no, that's cool. But you're you're absolutely right. As a, when you get a new technology, you tend to just want to yeah do everything, do everything you can with it. Yep. Uh, but congrats uh, to Dave on this one. This was a really really nice piece and going to a very good home. Dave's got an amazing collection on comic awesome. art fans. Glad to hear it. All right, so let's take a look at lot number sixteen now. This is another uh, vintage page. So this is from the uh, 1988 series Wolverine. This is lot sixteen, priced to four thousand dollars. It's from issue ninety five. Priced at, uh, for page 18, and it's on 11 by 17. So again, priced at $4,000. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think I went back and read this issue. So I'm not familiar with mm -hmm. the, the, this, the, the villain. The villain it. is Dirt Nap. <laughs> Dirt Nap. <laughs> yeah, he, he looks like uh, he's a rat with a smiley face on his chest. Larry Hammer wrote it, and, and, you know, and I drew it. And I see Nick Barucci is claiming stuff. Hey, buddy. He's trying. He's <laughs> he's, he, he was number five yeah. on this one. Nick, you got to be quicker. You got to hit that quicker. <laughs> um, but, but this was a, you know, this was also a special time. I mean, working with Larry, as a matter of fact, I'm doing a convention. And and next weekend, I think, um, Larry's going to be there. We're going to oh, have sweet. a special time in, in Las Vegas. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Uh, amazing con. And uh, I, I love working with Larry. And more than, more than you know, that he's such a talented artist and writer. Um, I love talking to him, mm -hmm. you know, and we're doing a couple panels and, and it should be a lot of fun. Well, that's cool. I've, uh, I've got an embarrassing photo that I, I should print out. No, I'll just send you that. You can put it on your phone and you'll yeah, show yeah. it to him. I, I did an interview with a uh, guy who ran a comic art gallery in New York in the mid to late seventies. Uh -huh. And he threw a Halloween party. Yeah. And Larry Hammer was there and he, uh, He's dressed as like Dracula or something, but he's got his hair up like this. He's oh, got, really? Oh, yeah. So you'll uh -huh. show it to me. He may not. He may send not, me it. I will. I will definitely. I'll say, hey, Larry, I got something. <laughs> you know? uh, but well, so this one went to uh, Taj Azarian. Thank you so much. There was a lot of quick claims that went in there. Jesse was second. Jordan was third. Rob L., Nick Ferrucci, Jimmy, uh, Michael Wigand. Lots of lots of interest in this one. So uh, thank you all for that interest. And uh it's uh, it's very appreciated, but congrats to Taj on getting this one. So we got four more lots to look at, and uh, I'm trying to silence my my uh, notifications from Facebook. There, I'll try to do better than that. Let's see, lot 17 is next. So this uh, this is priced at $750. It is from uh, Wolverine number one, the 2020 series. It's page 17 on 11 by 17 board, and uh, yeah, and this one is you got the kind of the whole. Well, you got several members of the team in in, in this one. Yeah, you have uh, Gene Gray, Wolverine, Gateway, Domino, and Kid Omega, um, and and the evil uh, priest, who's the guy with the X over his over his mouth. Very cool. And this one, uh, ES or EC ESP zero zero two, got this one just ahead of James and Jordan and Jesse. Lots of Jays in the audience tonight, and Nick Barucci. And uh, Joshua, yeah, lots of Jays wanted this piece. Oh, he says he did not mean to hit claim. That means that uh, Nick Barucci. No, nope. no. <laughs> sorry, Nick. Uh, unless James says no. See, James Siegel. Here, oh, we can answer this one in right here in front okay. of uh, 209 people right now. Have you been working on your tonal? I I have not, James. I I because he only bugged me once, so I need to be bugged. You know, <laughs> no. But uh, there you go, James. Now you heard it from Adam directly. Yeah. He has not yeah. worked on the tonal. Yeah. I haven't I'm bought mine fat. either. I'm still fat. <laughs> well, uh, this one has gone to, uh, to James says he will bug awesome. you again. Okay. No oh. problem. All right. Well, thank you, James, for that one. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you, James. I had a feeling you were going to get at least something from the show today. <laughs> uh, let's see. Lot 18 will be next. Let's go ahead and highlight that one. This is... Uh, from uh, the 2003 series of Wolverine. This is page 73, or uh, issue 73, page eight. It's priced at $1,200. It's on 11 by 17, and it's freaking unbelievable. Uh, you can see on the printed page, it has the days of the week. This is this is Wolverine on a typical week, getting his ass handed to him. But you know he ends up winning every battle, but he has to go through hell to get there. Right. Uh, 
I, you know, when I saw this one, I was like, I want to buy that page. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, that's how these things go. But this is this is a phenomenal page, and I, I can just hop over to the chat to see. I, I knew it, that somebody was going to claim it immediately, and a lot of people wanted this one. Uh, but it, I just want to make sure. Yep, it was Michael Lovett's got the chat in uh, first claim eighteen ahead of Yasmin and Jordan and several others. But tell me, I mean, was this? Was this pitched to you by the writer to do something like this? Or was oh, yeah, it, it was written this way. It was written yeah, this yeah. way. Six, oh, my yeah. gosh. Six six panels. Yeah, I'm sure it was, you know, I didn't change it than, you know, the way it was written. But, you know, again, I laid it out a little bit differently. I planned for uh, the days of the week, you know, to be put where, you know, where I had a, a, a wide gutter. Um, and days like this. It's not Wolverine's week that I'm going to start talking, but days like this, this is a wonderful day for me, you know, to, yeah. to draw and 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 hand, you know, I've handed uh, a story um, where I have to um, illustrate this, so it was it was really great. Wow, uh, yeah, no, it's this is a beauty. This one might have gotten more interest than any other piece so far. I saw so many claims that I'm not going to name everybody. Alberto, I've seen you drop in like 20 seconds later. This Alberto two nine three three two. Uh, on a couple of claims, just you know, I mentioned it before. Try to hit refresh on your browser, and you'll be uh, kind of closer to real time with everybody else. Uh, I do apologize for that. That's kind of how these live streams go. But uh, do that, and uh, you'll be closer uh, to have an opportunity on these last two pieces. And uh, the absorbing man ball and chain, exactly. I know, Michael. What's not to love on this page? It's, it's. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it, and truly, and it doesn't happen often. But when I saw this one, I was like. But it was it was even more cool to see the uh, you know the colored piece too. It was really really well done, and and it's, <laughs> it gave me an opportunity to put lettering in, in, into it, which you know I I, I think you know it, it helps enhance the, the the drawing definitely. And I see Jordan Fox trying to get a claim in on nineteen, not even knowing what it is. I know it's an accident. Don't worry about it, Jordan. Uh, we'll show it in a second, and you'll have the opportunity to uh, to go after it at that point. So let's see here. We got two more pieces to look at, and only right now, only two pieces haven't sold. So the recap will be very short too, which is always a good thing. Lot nineteen is here. This is from uh, the nineteen ninety one X Men series. So lot nineteen is priced at five hundred dollars. This is uh, from issue eighty one, page nine on eleven by seventeen. And uh, I think this is like the villain in, in this one, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm not looking at the description. For I it. am because <laughs> I forget. So this is the, so the vil the villain is Kali. I'll just read what was written here um, by my lovely wife, Tracy. Where would we be without yeah. her? <laughs> like, you're not kidding. <laughs> um, so this issue, issue featured the return of Gambit to the team. Page 9 features Callie at the Christian Science Center in Boston before her fight with Rogue and Gambit. All right. Well, I'm scrolling back up here. So, <laughs> And I don't know why I drew the tree like that. I, I, I was going to ask you about that. I was like, what, what's, cropping, what's cropping that tree like Maybe that? I couldn't fit it in the panel if I drew it too large and I had to cut it. I, I don't know. Um, Tracy, my, my wife, knows she, she's she been in uh, the, the Christian Science Center in Boston. She goes, Adam, you know, the ceiling is just not that high. And, well, you know, sometimes, you know, that, that that's my artistic license I use now and that. All right. Well, I'm looking at the chat because it, it is a confusing uh, scenario here. Where were we at here? Because now I've got to scroll through and make sure. Okay, there was there was when Jordan did his mistake. Uh, then we show the piece. I think Ilya said claim 35, which I have no idea why he did that. But Samuel Rojas is the first person to claim 19 uh, ahead of Jordan putting it in for the second time. So uh, and Kelly Goon tried to claim 21 too. What's up, guys? Uh, <laughs> there is no 21, There's right? no 21. We stop at 20 today. So, I mean, in my book, uh, you know, I'm not sure why Ilya, who's a regular here, typed claim 35, but I have to go with Samuel Rojas because that's the first claim 19 uh, that is in the chat after we showed it. So, uh, so yeah, so nobody can claim 20 because if you've watched the preview, everybody knows what it is. But we, we know, uh, you know, I'm not going to show it and, and I'm not going to accept a claim until... <laughs> Until we've actually put it on the screen. This is stressful. And oh, Ilya says it was for the next show. Very smart, Ilya. Very, very smart of you. <laughs> for the like next show. <laughs> that uh, is smart. Yeah. No, hey, Ilya is a veteran of uh, the channel. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, awesome. so, so that's why I knew that was uh, there was a tongue in cheek reason for the, him to do that. So that's thank, great. thank you, Samuel Rojas, for picking that one up. 
and uh you know it is a beauty so here let me, let me hide the current comments here try to get myself all situated yeah that's it is like a claim 15 dino you know, we had a we had a situation uh you know i do the dueling dealer show right well the first amateur show that i did was a match between uh dino mauricio and jordan joanno and mm -hmm. the last pc brought was a it was a john byrne piece from i think it was from she hawk but it was re uh, telling when Phoenix des destroyed the, you know, the, the, the planet, the dark Phoenix destroys the planet, blah, blah, blah. It has a nice big splash over on it. Mm -hmm. There must have been 50 people wanting that piece. It was, so it was all, and they have to say their name. So it's one, it's like one of our sayings, claim 15 Dino, because it was like the most miraculous moment. Right. And in, in all of the yeah, shows yeah. we've ever done <laughs> where a piece was just so in demand that yeah. people were stumbling over each other yeah. to get it. Well, I, I see some, you know, in, in the chat, some of the names, you know who put claim in it, it's the same exact time but because of what order it comes up exactly you know, that, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly and so so i see, see alberto who i who we were just talking about being 20 seconds behind it's not going to work alberto you can't claim 20 yet we haven't shown it yet um but um but yeah so so you've had a good time so far right adam i mean that's why how I, long have we been here it feels like like i swear to god it feels like you know half an hour i know it, it time flies I mean, yeah. it's actually been two hours and 16 minutes yeah. so far so uh it is uh that's great. It is pretty crazy. But yeah. so so we only got the one piece left to show. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and show it right now. This is lot number 20. And it is from the series uh, of X-Men from 1991. It's priced at $7,000. It's from issue 82. It is the, the page two and three DPS featuring uh, Wolverine, Colossus. But we got Storm. We've got uh, Rogue. And uh, again, the hunt, I know it's, it should be the hunt for Xavier, but it says the hunt for Charlie over there in the lettering. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. it's uh, you know, again, it's a 22 by 17. It is on two boards uh, taped behind. I'm, I'm sure uh, they are. I haven't, I didn't take it out of the portfolio. It is taped. Yeah. All right. With, with white tape, regular white tape. Got it. Not masking tape. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's see. We, I knew this one. Well, it would have gone to, it goes to Brian McCall. And uh, several other folks definitely interested in this one, but uh, but yeah, now this was, you know, this is from an era. I I love the way. I mean, it, you know, you were talking about small noses and everything, but I I always like the way he drew Colossus's face. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, he's kind of got it's kind of like this pinched metal face. I don't know yeah. something about him, but yeah. you know, and then just you know, you just had a cool way of of handling the character because after Cyclops for me, you know, Colossus was always like my number two favorite, then Wolverine. Mm -hmm. Everybody usually starts with Wolverine. But Colossus I, I, is a lot of fun. He was a lot of fun to draw. I forget who inked this though. I know, I, I think uh, Richard Eisenhoff colored it because I mean, you could see the coloring is like amazing. And this is, you know, again, um, you know, the digital coloring was new, but Richard totally had a handle on it. So I'm trying to look through here, but, uh, but yeah, so Brian, you did get this one and uh, you know, somebody congrats. put LOL Tracy Kubert. What did Tracy write in here? Uh, I had fun, Josh. Right? Where you're welcome. Josh. Oh, there she is right there. What did she write? I knew you would go over two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tracy. We're not, <laughs> the, we're not reading the chat. I'll be home much. soon. <laughs> yeah. Dinner's going to be cold. It'll yeah, be right. great for you. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you'd go over two hours. Cause I said there were, you know, I, I can't do two hours to it. You know, I'll, I'll be asleep after an hour, you know. But there's there's a detail image of it for yeah. those of you who don't uh, get to get to see it in it, all its uh, beauty here. But yeah, this is cool though. Getting getting a piece, you know, again, or, you know, early in your career, something like this. Uh, I mean, yeah, I I love it. I knew that. Um, yeah, it wasn't wasn't gonna last too long. So congrats to uh, let me write it, get it in there again. So uh, double check it just so I can be sure because it was it was Brian McCall has picked this one up. And and I will be signing all the pieces. I, like this one is I had already signed, but I haven't signed all of them. But they all, you know, I will sign uh, the front of all of them. Very very nice. So uh, so thank you for everybody picking stuff up. We only have two lots that didn't get claimed, so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll show those to everybody right now. Uh, the first up was lot four, and that was the the Avengers page. That uh, we with that one, you have this. Uh, here's the other slide that shows you the patch panel for uh, for Wasp and also the the prelim that went with it. And this one was priced at seven fifty from uh, mm -hmm. issue ten from the twenty eighteen series. Uh, like you said, Wolverine is in it. I mean, I should I should be looking at it too. His hat is in. His it. hat is in it. At the is very it? least. Well, actually, up in the upper upper left hand corner, that's him zooming away. And you got some Celestials in there. Yeah. Oh yeah, there you go. 
but yeah, if you're a Celestials fan, I mean, Quine, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Celestials in there, and Wolverine's cap and Wasp. So, uh, so that one's available at uh, seven hundred fifty dollars. And then, uh, see, let me, I gotta get my my chat in the right place here. Uh, Jeffrey's trying to claim Adam's dinner. You can't do that. <laughs> uh, what else we got here? So four is available, and then also lot eight. That was the uh, four pieces uh, from. Uh, Infinity Wars, Soldier Supreme. They were consecutive pages, uh, pages three here. Okay, we're going to cut the price down. We can do that. If okay. You, if, yeah, if you we'll like. Cut it down to 500 Cut For the four? Yeah, for the four. All can't, right. Can't beat 100, that. $125 a page, everybody, yeah. for pages three, four, five, it. and six from lot eight at $500. You got to type claim it. lot eight in the uh, chat. And, well, ding, we, that worked. All right. Oh, and uh, and. and uh, Matt. Nick, <laughs> Nick, you're too slow. Yeah, man. what is that? They're, 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 <laughs> Chad's popping by here. Marty Weber, uh, claim that one for five hundred. Hey, funny. this is actually nice working with an artist because usually yeah. the thing yeah. is when somebody Bam. someplace else, we can't have that conversation. Like, yeah, yeah. hey, I want to lower the price right now. Yeah, yeah. No, we just we just roll with it. Bam. So Marty Weber did that, and and I did see a comment that I could have missed. I see uh, where was that? Uh, claim four. Somebody said that uh, Bill, I claimed lot four. I, I might have missed that, but I believe. Oh, I'll claim four. There it was right there, Matthew Maxwell. So um, there we go. That's a sellout. Awesome. Let me write that down, though. Math, Matthew Maxwell. Amazing. Perfect. Wow. Well, this worked out. You know, well, I, got, I haven't. There's more show and tell. There, there that is more. True. I got. I got to show. You don't have anything else for sale, though, right? We're we're done with the sale portion. I was going to do show. something, but oh well. No, I, I, it's all we've got. This so point. I mean, it, I. I could keep going. I know you. I, well, well, no, they we should say no, these for, aren't these aren't for sale. These these yeah. are because I know, I you know, if you guys have stayed here for two and a half hours looking at this stuff, I I I, I want to reward them okay. for staying. Okay. So I have these these two pages that I brought. Oh, all right. Let me. Uh, this is back in the portfolio. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. You guys. Are gonna, yeah. Well, you uh, hold this. One. I, I will. I'm going to hold this yeah. one. You get to talk about it. Yeah. So I mean. I, I, there's not a lot of my stuff out there. I keep most of my stuff, and I just, uh, I just uh, got my hands on the, what was at the top of my pile. And this is uh, well, Wolverine obviously on a motorcycle. He's wearing uh, his wolf uh, skin. I forget why he put it on, but he's wearing that. And the character's name is uh, Bloodscreen. This thing is unbelievable. And and again. You know, I Larry wrote these. Um, I'm sure as single page images. Maybe you know the the big image was a, a full page splash. But I had it in my head that uh, you know this would be cool uh, across two pages to get you know to get the the width of, of the action happening. And again, the panels you know that led up to it, they're they're a little you know obscured, um, uh, not obscured. Uh, what's Sorry, the word? I can't. I'm not looking at it. Sorry, you're right there. Oh well, now okay. I'm looking at it. <laughs> Oh, the panels at the top. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 because that adds to the to the action, you know. Which oh is yeah, why well, they're little vignettes of what's happening just yeah. before you get the big scene. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'm t I'm talking about like the shapes of the panels yeah, are not yeah. squared off. It just gives a little more uh, um, uh, energy. It's dynamic. To, yeah, more dynamic to the image. And your own letter is that your own lettering on that? Uh, no, that was. I was gonna say that looks like it was uh, yeah. added on. Yeah, it's all statted and and uh, pasted on. Damn, this is uh, amazing. And and really, I mean, at, at this point in my career, it, it's really about exaggerating, you know. And, and I mean, the hair, you know, having to exaggerate through and 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 lead the reader eye from here down to here and and land there. Um, and that's actually what I try to do my whole career. Just you know, lead the reader's eye, you know, show them what I you know where I want them to look. You know, these panels overlap, you know, bringing it across here. Wow. I got one more. Okay. Okay. That was pretty incredible. Show and tell is fun, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, if they stuck it out, you know. This this one I really like too. And and I ride a motorcycle, so when you know, whenever Wolverine is on a motorcycle, I, I just I really dig it. All right. This one too. I hope everybody's sitting down. I think it's from the same issue. And again, vertical wow. spread. Um you know, I like doing things differently. You know, this is a shot where, you know, it it it, it 
it's not great to do a shot from behind Wolverine. You know, you don't see his face, but you know what? This is this is the way I wanted to tell the story. I'm not going to shoplift this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's, well, you can tell you enjoy drawing bikes on this thing, right? Yeah. I mean, you put a lot of detail in that yeah. thing. And I, and I know what they look like, and I know, you know, how it should look. Wow. This thing is incredible. It was fun. You know, and back then, I, I you know, I, I'd love to see the, the printed page, but I bet it didn't, probably didn't do the art justice in a weird way, because printing back then was just a little funky, but yeah, I mean, I hate yeah. to say it, but seeing the original. Yeah, oh this is gosh. Mark Farmer also, and he's like, you know. Oh, yeah. He, no, he's Farmer's the best. the best, absolutely. He's the best. You know, I, I had a little, wow. uh, um, not exercise, but a, a, like a, I, I wanted to say, because Mark, would would somehow clarify everything in my pencil so you could so you could see what it was and and, and make it out. But there was this one sequence with um oh, it was it was like spread after spread after spread. What was the character where Wolverine was uh breaking through a wall and through a bedroom wall? Oh, who was he fighting? I can't remember. But anyway, like they were splash after splash and and you know i threw everything including the kitchen sink in there yeah and he would like clarify every little item every little object and you know it was like a little a little thing that i i i, I, I gotta hand this back to this thing is amazing Sorry. everybody has to yeah are you kidding me that's a, all in caps that should be that's a, those are two amazing pieces adam i'm so glad you brought those sure. for show and tell Sure. Show and tell. Yeah. See, we, well, we could have a whole show that was just like show and tell. Nothing for sale. <laughs> well, that's what I did it at your, your right. Exactly. Thing, you know? I mean, that and was so much. That was it was blast. fun. No stress. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Well, Adam, this has been a lot of fun, and we and see, and our wives are always right. Oh my god, it's almost two and a half hours. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, but but again, it's you know, time flies when you're having fun. I mean, yeah. These things don't feel like work when you're you know you're talking. No, this is this is this is not work. Well, listen, everybody, uh, you know, we will definitely get another one of these on the schedule. I mean, uh, can't tell you, it can't promise when, but we, we will do another one. I mean, and like, Adam, great. maybe we'll do it at Adam's place next time. I mean, I can always carry the microphone and laptop with yeah. me or something, yeah. or, uh, you know, or we can do it again here, but, uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in today because this was, you know, a whole lot of fun. I mean, we could have talked for a couple more hours too, but, uh, you know, I appreciate all the purchases. As you know, if you claimed any artwork, I'll just show the slide one more time because it's got my email address on there. Uh, you know, don't wait till tomorrow. You know, don't heck you're, you're sitting in front of your computer or your phone right now. Send me an email right now, bill at comicartfans.com. If you claimed any of the artworks, include the lot numbers, your mailing address, and, uh, you know, just get that over to me right away. I'll, I'll probably be chatting with Adam a little bit after the show, but I can guarantee I'll get invoices out within the next couple hours. So uh, expect uh, those pretty promptly. Let me know when you send that email to it, how you want to handle the payment. If you're going to be paying with uh, uh, PayPal, there is a 4% USP, 5.5% international fee. And if uh, you're paying with Zelle or Venmo, I can get you that information so you can pay me that way. And there's no fees with those. And if you needed a little extra time, we did say that we'd give 45 days for payment. I need a third of it down today and the balance has to be paid within 45 days. So I can send out invoices for that too. Just keep that in mind. Those are on, on the couple of the really expensive pieces. The rest of the, you know, the things that are a thousand or less, you should be able to probably pay for on time, but Hey, we'll, we'll talk about it. Send me your emails. We'll work all those details out. Adam. Yeah. I, I just want to say, you know, I mean, the sale went, went really, really well, but I want to thank you guys for following me all these years, buying my stuff, enjoying it, you know, seeing you at conventions and, and chatting back and forth. Um, I really enjoy and, and I, I just want to thank everyone out there. All right. Indeed. Thank you, Adam. And, uh, so I look forward to doing another one of these with you in the Come future. On. This was a lot of fun. And yeah. I, I'm sure you're, it's like convention season. Do you have a lot of shows that you have coming? No, up? no, no. Um, like three, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. So can we, yeah, well, no, we won't say anything, but, uh, could we say that you're going to go to my show in, in, in January? Absolutely. Uh, January yes. 2024. We, I yes. haven't said it yet, but Adam yeah. Hubert will be at the uh, the art show in Orlando yeah. the last weekend in January 2024. So this is a second confirmed guest because I yeah. haven't talked about anybody else coming to the show. So, uh, And we're trying to confirm this meet and greet with, you can tell them. Well. Uh, or no. You don't want to. Now we should hold off on that. Okay, we'll hold off. We should hold okay. off on that. But okay. but that but there could be That's some. That's a good tease though, right? It, it definitely is. <laughs> 
Hey, we didn't even plan that. No, no. But again, thank you, everyone. This was this was so much fun, and uh, you know we will do it again. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. I, I know there isn't a lot left of it because it is Sunday afternoon, but we appreciate you tun tuning in uh, on a day when you could have been enjoying the outdoors. But uh, you know, thank you one and all, and we'll see you again soon.